we will begin our adventures approaching Westington. Uh, it has been several weeks of travel, even if you include a donkey, uh, which I don't think anybody has. Uh, <laughs> did we ever get that donkey? Uh, no, actually, I, I do have a donkey. Yeah, Oberdon does have a donkey. Oh, you have another donkey? I thought you traded it. You no, it. I, I remember I actually had a donkey, but and he yeah. came questioning me about a donkey, so I paid him five dollars for the donkey that he had lost, and then convinced him. If you own before all that happened, right? Excellent. <laughs> so I actually convinced him to buy back the. I, I I convinced him to buy the imaginary donkey back from me, so he ended up with no donkey and with no money, but he was too dumb to realize. <laughs> was too so, yeah. drunk. <laughs> Um, like he said one of the one of its donkey shoes was bad, right? Yeah, one of its donkey shoes. It had a, a flat donkey, donkey shoe. Shoes. <laughs> and, it, and, and the local oh, tavern didn't have any fixer flat for it. You really gotta go watch the VOD. It was such a good session. <laughs> oh, I, I, I did. I watched. I just oh. forgot. <laughs> you get the donkey shoes. I, I, you're right. It's so good. <laughs> um. So approaching, <laughs> I miss old Larry. Sorry, oh, uh, red chat. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> so old Westington is nestled off in. It's not the middle of nowhere, but it's definitely the like the further reaches the borderlands of what used to be the empire. There are old rolling hills that have been here for so long that even with the settlements that have been here for hundreds of years now, the the there's this quiet, rustic scenery that in the wake of the the pink lightning in the air on the sky and the, 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 the general emptiness that has kind of consumed existence has taken on a, a quiet and ominous and off tone. The grass grows, the trees have leaves, but it's almost as if they do so when they shouldn't. It's that kind of unsettling sensation you get just by looking around and seeing that this area somehow is still alive in ways that other places have managed to, have failed to, to, to maintain. Uh, and where you would think as you were walking down the winding path that kind of curved this way and that like a snake You'd think that would give you comfort. But it doesn't. And the absence of comfort where it is expected is just one more way that the local countryside is wrong. And the weight of all those little things here and there and the you can't really place it starts to really heavily keep, uh, keep its place in the back of your mind. For example, it is a snake that you think of as you walk down the road. Not a rope. Not any of the paths that used to lead to your idyllic hometown. But specifically that sinister icon. And as you can see the small huts of the buildings up on the crest of the horizon with the setting sun, setting, setting, sun, setting sun behind it, with the silhouettes of the buildings being stark and black against the orange and red fiery sunlight, or what little of it is left. You're passing and you see an abandoned wagon on one side and an empty farm hut to your right, but it looks like something has kind of burst out of the building that was somehow larger than the door. You pass uh, a tree that, unlike its cousins and brethren across the, the wood line here, is recently broken as if by force. And it's the only one that's like that. And eventually you'll reach the town border, and unlike every other village, ev unlike every other town that you've been to, you're not greeted by a guard. Nobody asks you for papers, or nobody checks to see what your business is here. Even Emerus got that when he went to his hometown. Mm. Security has to be stepped up nowadays. 
with the fall of the Empire came an absence of the Imperial Guard. And with the Imperial Guard gone in shambles and not around, uh, who's going to enforce the law? Everywhere was relying on the Imperial Guard. It was the internal military slash watch slash police. And without the head, the snake fell apart. But here, no guards. You don't know if that means you should feel safe. But yet again, there's that idea as you approach. And there's that sign that would normally be like, oh, what a nice place. That rings untrue and uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, everybody seems to be inside. It's dark out by the time you kind of break the border and arrive in town. What is your guys' first stop? Well, the, fir the first thing I'm going to do is, as we approach, and I notice it, I'm going to look to Oberdon and uh, Emerus. I'm going to say, it's like they just gave up the whole town, just ready to die. Well, I was just kind of saying this road looks like a copperhead, and you can tell the difference between a copperhead and a western diamondback by the patterns on the back. They're all brown. This road's brown, and really, it kind of makes me sad. Tilly noted, so we have more work to do, and we have a... it was a copperhead? Copperheads, yeah, I learned that from Beaver. Okay. And Beaver was the... The head of the Adventurer's Guild. Right. Right. So the taller one, or the... Leave it to Beaver. Tall. tall. Very tall. Blonde. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> uh, do we go to the tavern? Is there a tavern here? I could go to whatever's left of it. If Is anybody it. here? So I'm envisioning like Dudley kind of like walking forward into the into the village, right? And there's you know there's there's houses and buildings and stuff, and so like Dudley kind of like turns on a heel and is like, "Is anybody here?" Right? And there's light as if candles are lit in the buildings, but the streets are just empty. Are there any actual street lights, or is it just kind of there's no outside lamps? It's just the only light is coming from the windows of the buildings that don't have shutters. Uh, let's call that a let's call that a two d six roll. I mean, okay. Give me two d six. This is what I do when I don't know. I play way too much Dungeon World. <laughs> Four. Ooh. Uh, no, it is it. It's darker than the inside of a pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, all right, Oberdon's gonna sniff the air and see if he can smell anything that resembles roast meat or <laughs> any kind of wafting smells that seem to allure him to the sound or the sights that there may be something of deliciousness in the near vicinity. I was about to say, how do you go looking to find out where the tavern is, but you just answered that question. <coughs> uh, let's call that... Do you have a do, Roby search? All righty. Um, first roll I, I for, like, I just first roll for this character. <laughs> everything I need to know. It's going to be a 20... All right, there it let's is. see. There it is. All right, here we go. Search check. Do it. No! no yeah. you get it. it is a you terrible it. total of eight. Can you open the dice panel? Oh, I well, can, yeah. That's no, a thing. We didn't see it anyway because it was... Yeah. Poof, there you so, go. Uh, it's an eight. What we'll do here is we'll say that you can you can smell your way to the, to the tavern, uh, but we'll say that it's not deliciousness that draws you, just... Just food, not. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the smell of glorious roast beast. You didn't enter Whoville on Christmas. <laughs> it's not. It's not. You're in for a night. Let's put it that way, right? All right. Uh, you could definitely smell it, though. Okay, so uh, Oberdon he wraps his hand around the reins of his mule and says, "Come, Rankin Samuelson. I believe that there is sustenance to be had." And then he starts to pull the donkey stubbornly in that direction. What did you name the donkey? His name is Rankin Samuelson. Rankin Samuelson? Yes, he has a full name. Uh, do you have any points in animal handling? Oh, uh, I think I do. <laughs> do you? 
think. Uh, uh, yes, no, not animal handling. I don't. I have a very bad animal handling. I can Excellent. ride them. <laughs> so, so what we'll do is. Uh, oh, <laughs> so, uh, no. so, so you're like, come this way. There's sustenance to be had, and you pull on the donkey's reins. Nothing. The donkey just the, the donkey like it starts turning around. Like it, okay. you're like, yes, let's go this way. The donkey's like, no, nah, that reeks. I don't want any part of this. Like, right. oh, Oberdon kind of looks stubbornly at the donkey, and he gets really close and he says, "Rankin, you're embarrassing me." And Let then he's going head. to take the point of his dagger and give the the, the donkey a slight poke in the rump um, very subtly so that he's kind of got the donkeys in front of him and he's moved in really close so that everybody else can't really see what he does and then he just gives it a quick <clears throat> quick stab <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so give me another roll <coughs> um animal handling yeah <laughs> please fail again uh, no. okay I was only checking for a botch. I was basically fine. And it's gonna work. You wanted botch, me to get kicked was, in the teeth, didn't I, you? <laughs> but no, no, it's not a botch. You got an eleven. So the donkey will, the donkey will, uh, will be spooked. And you specified you were like going at everybody to make sure nobody could see that that's what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so like, kind of lean back. You're embarrassing me. And you give him the poke, and the donkey is suddenly startled by something that must be behind you guys in the creepy forest side, or some, or you know, like one of the abandoned farmhouses that you passed, or whatever. Like you guys are already a little on edge, so of course the donkey's gonna spook. Well, the donkey takes off down the road, precisely where it's needed, taking Oberdon with you. Uh, yeah, because I can't remember. I'd wrap the damn reins around my hand, so it's probably oh, not really having much chance to let go anyway. Are you riding the donkey, or just? No, I was walking next to it. All right. So uh, the donkey is taking Oberdon for a very rapid walk ahead of the group <laughs> in the direction that you assume Oberdon has smelled sustenance, unquote. And I assume everybody else can, like, follow. Good idea, Rankin Samuelson. It does look like an evil dark night. We should get inside. Let's hurry. <laughs> Quote. <laughs> like, like, like I said, death all around. Nice waiting for us all. I just hope maybe some that we can finally... Some faster than others. <laughs> I hope there might be somebody like us in there. Eclectic. Dudley, I'd be surprised to find anyone in this entire world. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to head in that direction. We, we follow well, Oberdon and the uh, stock mule and... Uh, <laughs> ranking... The tavern. Ranking... Ranking Samuelson. I think yeah. it's his Rankin Samuelson. Rankin will lead the way. Uh, <laughs> As he does. New, new party leader. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we'll say we'll say we'll that Rankin, Rankin finds a trough. And Rankin is perfectly happy with the trough. And whether or not you wanted to stop at this tavern. <laughs> or stopping at this tavern. <laughs> uh, is there an actual stable here? Or is it more just like... Um, stable right uh there's a stable and there 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 are let's say three horses two of which uh are clearly branded uh with uh with a with a, with a symbol that you saw on like a ranch that you passed on your way into town so they're local horses and the third one uh the third one uh let's let's say octavius what was the name of your town where are you from me yeah it's you uh, uh, Easton, Easttown. Easton. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, these names? and Eastington. So he's hey, going to represent the east side. Okay. For the record, Easton is my cousin's name, so I'm cool with you. <laughs> Perfect, Easton. Right. Is there a north town and a south Southington? Duh. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a, with a backstory that explains the names of these damn towns <laughs> that like are like. I'm so tired. I was I was originally from Centralia, but it's <laughs> since been renamed. Rodolfo. Uh, <laughs> just Middleton now. We actually, we, yeah, we did. We said that your town had been renamed in honor of your brother. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. So I actually, I have ideas. These towns <laughs> named in the, after the cardinal directions because they, they sprouted around watchtowers that were erected towards the edges of the empire and once the empire had grown inward and you know built a capital elsewhere uh and had and had gained so much military strength and organization uh 
the the watchtowers became more like tourist attractions and aren't really used anymore because the empire didn't really have threats until the great war against the undead but that didn't come from west or east or south it came from the north the, the north <laughs> sure I think, I, I think we enter the tavern right i mean yes, so so the the stable master is a, uh, oh, the stable okay. <laughs> is a human who's kind of like sleeping leaning against the doors to the stable and he's holding uh like it's clear he's he's got a he's got like he's like a tip box for where you're supposed to pay for your your animal uh and it's labeled like five copper a night per beast but he's sleeping and the donkey has already trotted its way in uh <laughs> just to just happily munch away and drink next to the three horses two from Westington and one from Easton all right, that's one copper each for me, each of us, everybody. Pay up, pay up. And I'm going to hold my hands out to everybody to collect one copper each, looking them in the eye. I'm, I'm, uh, you're there you're all volunteering to pay for me to house my mule? <laughs> I'm just going to hold up my hands to show I have no money. Huh. Nothing? Uh, okay, I can cover you for now. I can cover you for now. Uh, we're, we're part of a group. We... Our money, uh, our expenses, they're together now, right? That's what we did in the guild. I thought I explained my situation. Oh, your, oh, your, po- I'm so sorry. Yeah, your poverty thing. I respect that. But we still need to pay for the, the housing of this creature. I'm pretending not to pay any attention to this. <laughs> <laughs> Overdon is just like going into the tavern. If you people are stupid <laughs> enough right, to pay yeah, for my I'll donkey... Um, I reach into my I re- reach into my purse and I'll flip two copper pieces to oh. um to um Dudley and say I attempt to catch. <laughs> you, you you grew up as like a uh, like a what what is the equivalent of a mall rat but in the woods? <laughs> a woods rat. A woods rat. You, grew up as a, you have a you have a coonskin cap. You can catch copper coins without yes. a wolf. Yes. Right. All right. I'm gonna look to Emery. There's one for with one for my share and one for the tip. Oh, thanks. What was that, Emery? Nothing. Nothing is. I was talking to the head in the sky that tells us what's happening. Oh, what did you say? Uh, I always imagine a DM just floating up above everything that's happening. <laughs> uh, uh, Dudley, yeah. just stable the mule. The guy's asleep. He won't know the difference. That's uh, well. I'll, I'll take. I'll cover you for now. It's okay. Two copper. Here's my three. Uh, all right. I'll meet you in there. I'm right, just so gonna I'll go put the in. copper I'm, in the box. Okay. I'm, I'm entering the tavern with uh, open. Oh, well, I'm not going in just yet. Oh, I'm. Well, I'm waiting to go in with you. Okay. I. I Seeing you fumbling around trying to figure out how to deal with five copper pieces, <laughs> Oberdahl is taking the mule into an empty stall um, and looking around for a brush. As soon as he realizes that this mule is not going to get any attention from the sleeping staple hand, so he's going to do a little bit himself. All right, yeah, there'll, there'll be a brush. Okay. Like all of your all of your general uh, beast tending accoutrement <laughs> will be scattered throughout the place. It's a mess, but it's okay. there. Uh, yeah, so he starts just brushing, making sure that um, Rankin Samuelson is in a stall. He's got him kind of like either closed in or at least tied to the rail. Um, starts to brush him down and then just says, Sometimes I envy you, beast. You probably have it better out here than we will in there. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> And then after he's given it a rudimentary brush, he's not going to go full groom on this thing. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I've paid you some attention. Whatever, now I'm going in. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, So you you, you then enter the tavern? Yeah. You're not bothering the stable master? You're not... Um... I'm going to pay attention to... Did Dudley Dudley actually leave the money somewhere for him? Yeah, I go up to the stable master and I go... "Ah." I try to, like, lift the box up so it won't fall out and carefully place my coins (laughs) in the box, trying not to wake him. Just here, just here. 
we're just storing our donkey. When you lift the box, yeah. the box is empty. Oh no. There are no other coins in this box. Either he just brought the box out after somebody <laughs> had paid, or nobody has paid the stable hand <laughs> anything this whole time. <laughs> I'm going to still place the five copper in the box and try to stabilize it so it stays within the box and doesn't fall out. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> and then I he, will enter the... He mutters something about baking <laughs> in sleep. <laughs> uh, so we can uh, we can transition into the tavern then. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, outside there are zero signs of life. The only difference between the outside and the inside, other than it being warmer and the smell of food and ale being stronger, is that there are people here. Animate people. Bonus. <laughs> oh my. There are a lot. So it's not a room but of dead people. Lively is not the word I would describe this tavern with. The the light here is dim and flickering and only adds to this sense that this place has, as uh, put it, given up. <laughs> I, I need to. I need to. I need your name in a place I can read it. <laughs> Hjork. Hjork? I, I still can't. Hjorthurk. 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 As Hjorthurk put it, everybody here gave up and they're just waiting to die and. You know, at, when you approach, you're like, oh, I can see where Hirothurk got that idea. And then when you step in, you're like, wow, he fucking called it. <laughs> there, are, there are people hunched over their, their tables, most of them not wanting to interface with each other, with mugs of ale that smells like it might be a bit too stale to be serving at a tavern, and, and food that has been cooked by somebody who's trying... Uh, <laughs> trying to cook food. <laughs> even the bartender is uh, the bartender is sitting behind the bar. It's this big burly orc, uh, which is an unheard of, but is uncommon to find orcs that are uh, that were allowed in the borders of the empire. Maybe he's new and came, you know, from the into the empire from the outer reaches of the borders, or maybe he was one of those people that managed to prove himself as good at menial labor and whatever else they would let the orcs do. Uh, so he's this massive hulking six, eight, seven some odd feet. Shoulders like basketballs. Tusks that come up to the bottoms of his eyes and pointed ears and green green skin and lots of battle scars. And he's wearing an apron that doesn't fit because he is made of raw muscle. And this apron was not made for someone as big as he is. And he's <laughs> cleaning out a mug. And he looks up and you, everybody else is aware that you've entered, but instead of getting like that kind of Western saloon moment where the music stops and everybody turns and looks <laughs> at you, everybody kind of like hunches a little more over their ale as if to, you know, in that like, no, I don't want to talk to anybody. Why is somebody coming into the tavern kind of moment? Oh, I'll fit right in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so what was the first one in? Uh, we're going to have a glance around. Is there a empty space at the bar or an empty table? Yes, nobody is at the bar. That would require social interaction with the orc. Uh, the bar is always my favorite spot, so um, I'm going to go and find the closest point to the bar that is near the wall. Okay. All the um, left to the right, yep. And go and pull out a stool and plop my weary self down on it. So, uh, so you, you walk up and before you even walk up, the orc has already put a big friggin' mug that is actually spotless and clean. It's the one thing thus far that has not given you that weird emptiness is that this orc cleaned this fucking mug probably way too many times. OCD orcs. <laughs> Gotta love them. Puts it down, and then he just immediately starts pouring. And what you thought was ale is not. It's vodka. Oh. Uh, a huge... So he basically he's pouring a oh, pint of vodka. Yeah. Okay. Um. What is that? Water? That's why it's so clean, yeah? <laughs> I'm not going to assume that that's for me. <laughs> He puts it down, pours the pours the mug, 
and then just go without talking to you because he doesn't want to be intrusive, right? Just goes back to cleaning. And there is a mug of vodka sitting in front of you. So he did put it directly in front of me. He put it right in front okay. of you, yeah. Um, I'm going to glance at it suspiciously and kind of go... So, uh, this is a potato vodka. Okay. And it is made from potatoes that were not grown in a nice place. <laughs> Shit potato vodka. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does it clearly taste of that, or...? Ah, uh, you've, you've had worse. You... No, you haven't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a second thought, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, a pint of vodka is more than I plan to drink in this place. Right. Um, I glance around kind of like at the edge of the bar, under the bar, see if there are any other mugs, cups, beakers, anything else I can grab my hands on to share there some are, of this. There are a lot of mugs, and they are all pristine and sparkly and clean. Uh, I reach in and grab one, plop it down on the table. Um, Dudley has no business drinking. Hey, I've <laughs> drunk stuff before. Emery, I got drunk. probably. I, does Emery drink typically or no? How much? Okay. No. Um, in that case, then I just grab one mug and I pour half of it in and sit it down next to me and say, This is not the best we've had, Orthric, but it at least is palatable. If you have the palate of Rankin Samuelson. Cheers. <sighs> Did he just admit to poisoning his dog? Cor, who did you offer this to? You. You. Okay, because <laughs> I didn't think you'd be your third. I heard Robert. <laughs> well, that's your name. I will remind you what in I his native tongue, it's. Sounds like Emperor. So I'm going to take it and kind of like. Not needed. Uh, it's not needed, but thanks. And I'm going to start drinking from it, too. Yeah, right. hand me one of those. Uh, do you say that out loud? Yeah. Dudley? Orc just reaches underneath, turns around, puts a mug down, and pours you a whole pint. No, that's enough. Uh, Please. Uh, <laughs> thank you. you. You protest. The orc does not listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You now have a pint of vodka, young lad. <laughs> uh, hey, Emery, you want to share this with me? I, uh, I this is, my, this is as big as my head. I'll help as best I can. Thank you. I'm going to take a little swig of it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, drunk. <laughs> Rolly roll con. Oh, God. <laughs> For one set. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I'll roll you con. Like a racial unbonus there. <laughs> oh, look Yay! at him. He's been sipping Grandpa's what? cough medicine. That wasn't a check to see if you got drunk. That oh. was a check to see if you could stomach this shit ass vodka. <laughs> Amazing. And um, that weird kid who actually likes the taste. I don't know how that goes. He says he so, likes uh, it. <laughs> so uh, the orc will turn around and he'll look at Emery, who's sharing a mug with the halfling, right? Orc looks. He looks at the bunch. There's the dwarf. Yeah, I, I don't give him the friendliest of stares. As I yeah, the, the, the dwarf? No, dwarf doesn't want to talk to him. He looks at Oberon. No, Oberon, he knew Oberon wanted a drink before Oberon said anything. He doesn't, Oberon doesn't want to be talked to. So then he looks at Dudley, and then he looks at Emery. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Food? Uh, that would be wonderful, yes. We got, uh... Um... Martha! winch. I'll be right back. Yeah, it's out. And then there was a clashing, and a screaming, and a yelling. Martha! Martha! And then a, what? Not, nothing! Just, just do the menu. Got it! <laughs> and I'll come back out sauntering, as if nothing has happened. I'll hand you the menu. Okay, with that, Oberdon's like, so the looked menu. up and staring over across from the corner of the bar at the uh, at the menu because he is hungry. So the menu consists of the words sliced, baked, mashed, smashed, roasted, 
stew, and so forth. But on the what? front of the menu, you close it. It says potatoes. <laughs> 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 Only drink listed is just the word splashed. Splashed. <laughs> hmm. you like your potatoes splashed or mashed. It's my new favorite thing. And I it's will be asking every house guest. They are currently drinking the splashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see what's on there? Uh, yeah, help, help yourself. It's on Thank you. I'm going to take the menu you. and kind of read it out. Over to Oberdon. Yeah, I'll kind of lead over to Oberdon so we can both take a look at it. Oh, this is pretty cool. So there's lots of different types of potatoes. You could get it roasted or smashed or. I'll, I'll try the baked. Baked? So the orc says, uh, you want the full platter or the coward's portion? <laughs> I'm certainly not a coward, so I will definitely have the full thing. Well, I think the two of us add up to one here. <laughs> like, you. Dudley is like, I want the full thing! And the orc just kind of glances at Dudley and then looks at you, and you're like, we can split it. And then the orc <laughs> looks at Dudley and then looks at you. <laughs> Shrugs. And then he looks at Oberon. Food. Um, my good barkeep, do you have any, um, gravy? And I do mean gravy, not just something that is brown and liquidous. <laughs> Remembering I... what the vodka tasted of. <laughs> this is a... Might have some potato gravy. Isn't that just mashed potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> very watery mashed potatoes, that's what I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> what about spices? Do you have any pepper? Yep. Excellent. <laughs> then bring me a bowl of roasted potatoes and some mashed. And, um, a good deal of pepper. The full platter or coward's portion. <laughs> oh, the full platter. Mm. My donkey likes potatoes. <laughs> I'll Whoa. share it with Wrinkle Samuelson if I have to. <laughs> My donkey likes potatoes. <laughs> Let you say that to all the barkeeps. <laughs> I'm starting to picture this is just like alternate universe Shrek here where he actually <laughs> likes the donkey, but the donkey doesn't talk. <laughs> that you know of. I'm teaching the donkey a word. Once I've got it down, once I once I, the donkey knows how to do it, it'll be. I'll reveal it to everybody. Okay. <laughs> and animal handling minus two, right? <laughs> Only minus one. And he'll ask the dwarf food. <laughs> so I um during all this, I actually turned in my stool with drink in hand, ignoring the orc, okay. and I'm looking out at the people. To see if there's anyone that's colorful or interesting looking, and not like hunched over. Near death. Research! Give up. Oh, yay. Yay, my first 20 is going to happen here. Watch. It's going to oh, be cool. beautiful. Uh, I'm going to find Matt's characters. Make it a thing. Wonderful. Make it a thing. I'm not there, dude. You're, he's, he's standing Matt on Matt doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Look at him! Oh, he got it! <laughs> he Who's the one? Who's the one? The beautiful one. Who's the one who voted for me? Would have been me. I like how you roll a nat 20 and still get a 19. Yeah. <laughs> Natural 20! There we go. Uh, uh, the one person that voted for Shagget is the winner of the... And that was... Oh. Woof! <laughs> woof! Raise it. Raise, raise, raise the, the woof. woof. <laughs> Alright, there's your natural 20. That puts you on the board. I find nobody, right? <laughs> right, Squee? <laughs> so, you imagine somebody with that role. <laughs> Uh, there will be, of all the people hunched over, tattered clothes, everybody wearing, like, dirty rags and shades of gray and brown and that pale, ugly blue they used for CSI New York for reasons, <laughs> right? <laughs> there will be one person wearing a bright, frills, pink shirt with an immaculately trimmed beard, hair such great hair, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Is he tall and Blue beautiful? eyes that could... Beaver? 
that could, blue. <laughs> it's Christmas blue, boy. Blue eyes that, <laughs> that could freeze the ocean for their for their sparkle, and he is leaning back with his hands behind his head. Oh, you didn't geez. see him when you first walked in because he's like pressed up against the door, right? Okay. And he's not sitting at his table. That would be too mundane. No, he <laughs> is leaning against the wall next to his table okay, with and... a mug of untouched splash potatoes. And, <laughs> and you said he's wearing pink? A pink frilly shirt. Like, that's, okay. that's, a, like, that's so... the sort of craftsmanship that you can't find anymore. Right. So I'm going to immediately start nudging Oberdon. Okay. Who, uh, yeah, as he's... <laughs> Remember I told you about that, uh, the, the, the monk who told me all that weird things when I first, you know, before I met you? Before the bandits? I told you that a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, vaguely. I, I remember. Oh, he, he told me to ride the pink lightning. Well, <laughs> I'm going to gesture with my mug of splash potatoes uh, uh, to the guy. I'm going to grab hold of Hjorthric by the shoulder and say... I know he may be dressed a little effeminately, but are you sure that that's something you want to ride? No, not not that way. Just information, I guess. Ride in another sense, not like your donkey <laughs> or or anything sexual. That's not what I had in mind. It's just... And it's just specifically the color pink that draws you to that to that conclusion, is it? Well, I mean, it's the only thing pink in this whole tavern, you know. Hmm. Well, um, explore I... that as you will, and uh, when the food comes, I'll give you a shout. That's my life. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another drink of my splash potatoes and put it on the counter, kind of like awkwardly dust off my shoulders, even though there's no dust on it, and just kind of like <laughs> approach the frilly pink man as all that's happening. I approach the frilly pink man. Hey, it's a yes. thing. That's how it happened to me. Just saying. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run with uh, with with Hjorthark here. Unless somebody else wants to do something specific before oh. I handle that. All right, Have so here we go. Ripley this, Miller, uh, thanks for the uh, this guy in a, buddy. like big collar, right? Really, it's got it's got the like it's got as you approach, you realize it has white accents on it. Uh, the, it's got those poofy sleeves that are very tight around the wrist, right? And he's got a big, uh, like a big white belt that's probably like six or seven inches tall that's tied like it's cloth. He looks like he walked out of like a swashbuckling movie that was a little more pink. Okay, Let's put so it that way. This isn't just everything Matt is typing to you about his character. <laughs> it's not. So Matt. It's not. So he. Okay. He'll uh, like he clearly he sees you coming right, but he lets you make the first move. Uh, do you have anything to do with lightning? Well, that depends on what you exactly mean. Do you mean how quick my moves are? Because if that's what you mean, then the answer is yes. <laughs> so, I'm going to pause there for a second. That wasn't what I was expecting, but I'm running with it. I was going to run this <laughs> NPC, right? <clears throat> no, go, go. It's you now. <laughs> it's, let's do it. Is that what you meant by your question? Uh... Well, this old man in the woods told me to, to interact with the pink lightning. Whoa, you need to just calm down for a second, okay, pal? What old man are you talking about? And did he come to you in some sort of a dream state? I, uh, after meeting with him, I honestly thought I was waking up from a dream. Huh. Because it was so weird and he moved so awkwardly and said things that made no sense, but... I've been trying to work it out over the past several weeks. And, uh, well, now I'm here, and despite the lightning strikes in the sky that occasionally are seen, there you are in pink. Uh, godly pink. 
Myself. Oh, yeah. So you noticed my garb from across the room. Thank you. Well, it's, look around. You're like, you stick out. Well, it, it's not really on purpose. It's just sort of it, I was drawn to it. Like, for example, when you think of love and peace and serenity, what's the color that you think of? Blue, to be honest. No, that's <laughs> no, that's not the correct answer. It's pink. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, listen, listen. Um, have you come across any people of my kin? Short in stature, but strong. Well, I don't know what you mean by your kin. I don't really see people of different shapes and sizes. We're all just sort of on this big plane existing as one. So no, right? So no, yeah, right. You haven't seen anyone of a dwarf stature. Well, I mean, I've seen dwarves before. I've gone on many travels in my time. And, and anywhere nearby? Recent? No, I've, I've, uh, no, I can't say other than you, unless this is just some sort of a deja vu we forgot about. Could be. <laughs> I'm just gonna look, I wanna look you up and down and kind of like, huh, and I'm gonna say thank you, and I'm just gonna turn and walk back to my counter. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's looking at me as I approach, I'm just gonna kind of give it like a shrug, like a hash shrug, like, Argh. Uh, before you leave, I'm going to say, excuse me, uh, what is the name that they call you? Uh, call me Yorthurk. Yorthurk Stoneforged. All right, I'm just going to call you Thurk. Is that is that all right? Uh, I'd rather you not. Cool, Thurk. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. And And what name should I butcher now that you've disrespected me? Well, if you want my full name... It's Octavius Cindergard, but since I consider us friends now, you can call me Otto. So I'm just going to call you O. Hey, if that's what you feel inside that you need to let out, I'm all for it, man. I'm just going to give you another once-over look. Kind of just, fucking people. I'm just going to walk back to my counter. <laughs> So did you find someone like us? Not like us at all. You guys are tolerable. Oh, who is he? I'm going to try to keep that to a whisper so he doesn't hear us. <laughs> did I hear them? <laughs> <laughs> Roll me listen. A uh, listen? Okay. Oh, no, I, I, no. I, I, did say, I did say tolerable uh, very quietly. So yeah. Possibly. You're not the one I'm, I'm worried about unless he rolls a crit. Like, <laughs> oh, Well... Did Ooh. not show up for you? Oh, it didn't, oh, didn't oh. show up for everyone? Quiet though you may have been. <laughs> on a 27. 27? On a 27. I'm gonna 19. say he, I'm gonna oh say this. God. I'm gonna say that Octavius Syndergaard has ears for days. So upon hearing that, um, I'm gonna quickly walk over and say, uh, please continue. I am quite curious on how you would explain me to other beings. You say that to me or to them? I say it to you, yes. Okay. I turn around and I say, I don't honestly know. <laughs> but I don't like it. I'm going to stand up off my stool, which probably makes me shorter. <laughs> stand up straight. Hi, nice to meet you, Dudley Ham. I'm going to hold out my hand. Hey, Duds, pleasure to meet you as well. You can call me Otto. Duds, cool name. Yeah, I think so. I mean, why, why elongate things when names are just something else someone gave you, oh, right? Wow, yeah. You can say the same I like. Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. You get it. What's uh, what is your name, friend? <laughs> I'm actually kind of afraid to answer. I'll, I'll be given a bit of an abbreviation, won't I? Um, well, maybe it depends if it's short. Maybe I'll elongate it if it's too short. I don't know. Um, let's let's just let's just call me Emery for now. So M. All right. There it was. Yeah, you knew it. 
You get you get how things work. I like that. So uh so what are we all doing, huh? <laughs> well right now we're just having a drink. Do you yeah. want some of mine? I'm gonna show them the No, mine. no. Yeah, should you hey, should you have that? I think so. Uh I don't have I any mean, parents anymore. Oh. <laughs> Buzzkill. All right. Oh, no, my dad's still out there. So, but I mean, they're not looking at me right now. I could be a little bit, a little bad sometimes. Hey, you know what, little guy? I'm totally behind it 100%. Thanks. Yeah, Otto. your secret safe. Huh, your secret safe with me, duds. <laughs> And it's a perfectly good opportunity to I say I'm OP right there. <laughs> <laughs> what is Oberdon doing well uh that um, hasn't he is still uh he is st- he, he's still nursing his mug of potato slush um <laughs> splash um and wrapping his fingers on the bar staring inanely at the door where he knows the food is going to come out of at some point so you haven't looked at me yet at all or even um he glanced at you he kind of a few kind of casual glances over there while um he or Thrick was talking to you but right now um he's only mildly curious about the fact that you're all over there talking because he knows dudley's gonna tell him everything because Dudley always tells everybody everything. Um, and again, <laughs> there's food going to come out of that door. So it's like, periodically, he'll just be like... <laughs> is, uh, is he with you as well? Uh, yes, still. All right. He just likes to kind of do his own thing, be left alone. Oh, he's kind of. No, he's a great guy. He he knows really what he's doing, and he's got a cool donkey. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Ranking what? What? I forgot his name. <laughs> he's oh, got a really good cool donkey. He's got a cool name. God, oh, I know you great. don't like names, but I like it. Well, that's not true. It's not that I don't like names. I just like to make my own spin on names. That's big pretty, difference. That's pretty neat. Isn't that interesting and eccentric? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Pretty interesting personality trait, right? I'm going to like try to lean into him to speak, even though he's probably like, hey, yeah, listen. Yeah? Uh, are you one of the good ones? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I try to... Are you fighting do- the good fight? Yeah, well, I mean, waking up every day is fighting the good fight, but if you mean anything more existential than that, then yes, I am. No, like the literal, the literal, the, the war, the physical fight. Yeah, uh, I do, when I see situations that I feel like I could lend a helping hand in, I try my best to always jump in and, and help out as best as I could. Is that all kind of what your whole bag is for your group are you like a traveling band of like do-gooders we we've helped out a few towns here and there well i do have sort of a proposition for you in that case what if now hear me out i tagged along with you uh that's not necessary Uh, no 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 you could use someone with my services, believe what, me. What services do you present? Well, can anybody in your party do this? And I'm going to try- <laughs> attempt to backflip. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You watch him roll like a demon. Oh my god. All right. oh. Uh, roll me back plus flip. <laughs> yeah, would that be a do jump? Have, do you have ac- acrobatics? Ac- I have jump. I don't think acrobatics a thing, right? Or is tumble? It, wait, is, is, uh, uh, wait, hold on. Oh god, why sure. am I? He has, you have the jump feet. It's the first time I've played this edition in ten years. Which I have skill the jump is this? skill. Oh, okay. Jump yeah. skill, tumble. 
tumble. Yeah, no, you're supposed to take the run feet and then I'll take jump skill. I'll take either one of those, Wait, by the way. Where is the where is the <laughs> skill? Where is the skills? I I'm pretty certain there is like a, there's an acrobatics. Uh, well, there's a you could take it as a perform skill. Like an acro it... acrobatics could be technically a perform. I'd rather use specifically a jump skill. for that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying if if you're looking for an actual skill, yeah, no, you won't see it on the sheet. Edition. So uh, jump, perform, <laughs> I'm so scared. tumble. Jump I want to say tumble. this is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll be I'll be nice for now. Give me a give me a use magic device check. No. Um. <laughs> oh, would it be jump? I suppose for just like for just a straight up standing, no yeah. like no pressure. I'll take I'll take jump for this. That works for me. Okay. Now, are all my rolls going to be hidden? Because that <laughs> no, last one there's was only a few. Just look at your macro. Okay. You seeing it? Yep. If it says slash, slash WGM, w GM, then it will be. Nope. No. Okay. Cool. Good. So jump check. No pressure. Jesus. Damn. Oh my god. 31. Oh, All right, so so uh, Octavius, how dope was my backflip? <laughs> okay, so um double tuck. 31. So this is going to be like it's going to be like a standing backflip, right? You're going to do it you're going to do a backflip and then you're going to go another whole half a backflip, land on one hand, make a quick hop on one hand, use your free hand to wave at take your character of choice. Uh Dudley, obviously. <laughs> wave at Dudley, right? With a with a smile. Uh -huh. And then do a, like a full off of your hand alone, lower down, press up and spin, and then flip and land back on your feet in a perfect T pose. <laughs> so I'll kind of compose myself. So can anybody in your party oh, do that? Uh well at what point would that have been useful if someone was swinging a sword at you? Well, at what, this what, point, Oberdon is now definitely paying attention to what just what happened. If, what <laughs> if three people shot three arrows at me at different times and heights? I could have moved my body in such a way where I could have dodged all thrice of those arrows. I haven't even gotten that badge yet. What is that backflip badge you have? Uh, I don't know what a badge is, but yeah, I guess. It's these. So you, I hold up this thing on my oh. shirt that I have sewn in rudimentary pieces of, like, leather. So you're a collector. <laughs> of sorts. Is there yeah. any sign of this food yet, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Overdon, Overdon, roll me spot. All right. Whether or not you see it is whether or not it's there. <laughs> Reality. That is what that is one of the ways I use the dice, but this is I have something <laughs> You you, you smell eight. food, but it's not here yet. How tragic. Okay. Um this is bad service. <laughs> a barkeep. Um And then okay, so you're like, oh barkeep, right? And then you'll hear like a surprised grunt like, oh shit, I've been caught. Right? <laughs> and uh, and the orc who's been hiding behind the door to the back room this whole time Octavius has been here. <laughs> like he wants nothing to do with the man in pink. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> He'll come out. So, who ordered Coward's portions? Anybody? I don't think anybody no, did, do they? Yeah, we all got regular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to imagine a basketball, right? Something the size of a bat. Now make that something a potato. <laughs> that's that's the non-Coward's portion. These potatoes are fucking huge. So the roasted potatoes are the size of a half baked, a regular half baked potato, cut into so like. like... <laughs> so like, uh, I, no, you didn't get chopped. You asked for the roasted, right? So you. So it's a whole roasted it, potato. A whole roasted potato, <laughs> and it's like you could tell somebody took like a wood cutting axe and like chopped an X into the top of it, and and tried to dress it up with stuff. Uh. No luck there, really. It just looks like random leaves on top of the potato. <laughs> Garnish. <laughs> Garnish. Uh, and so this giant potato and this orc will kind of like put it down on the counter in front of Oberdon. Uh, what was it that Dudley ordered? Uh, yeah, I... so between Emery and Dudley, we have a baked potato. So you guys will get a baked potato that is like split open and there is just you're pretty certain that it's just a log of butter just stuck into it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you asked for copious amounts of pepper, right? 
Yes. He will put a sack of pepper <laughs> on the counter next to you, Oberdon. Just ground up and everything. Okay. Just uh, there. I'm going to just take a fork then and kind of like tear where the X was cut. I'm going to kind of tear it open a little bit and spread it out. So now I've got more like a flowery opened baked potato. Giant, a giant potato. <laughs> I reach like. in and grab a very generous pinch of pepper and sprinkle it all over the top. Okay. And then... Sounds kind of good. Kind of... <laughs> somewhat gingerly... Stick the fork in it and... Well... And taste it. With ample butter and pepper, you can manage to get this thing with some, you know, a couple trial and error bites. You can manage to get this to taste like butter and pepper with some bad potato. <laughs> okay. Forgetting right now. Hence the seasoning. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna smush it up to make it as soft as possible, because that way, my theory is it'll last. It'll be in my mouth less if I don't have to chew it. <laughs> You're pre-chewing your potato with your fork. <laughs> yeah. So I'll I'll butcher it, um, and then after eating a few kind of large portions, I'll look across and say, "Horse Rick." The food, it's here. That's about all I can say, but it is here. I'm going to awkwardly turn in my stool and look at you as you have your mouth dripping probably with butter. Yeah, I've probably got bits pepper. of potato all in my beard and stuff like that because I'm not very clean. <laughs> you, you sound like the old monk that I spoke to. Yes, the food is here. Well, I would like to say that the food is, um, something you should rush over to. But, um, if you are hungry, there's some form I, of sustenance. I, I appreciate the offer, but I am fine. Thank you. You're too kind. Served with the side of bars. And I'm not going to turn back to Autopius. I'm going to keep my back to him now. <laughs> as I drink my vodka and uh, kind of glare at the orc. So, what, if he's sitting next to me again, then... I'm going to kind of lean in a little bit as I spoon another helping of this, <laughs> this. root vegetable into my mouth um, and say, what's the deal with that flamboyant fellow? I see him thumbathorting and flipping about. What was that all about? I'm, I'm gearing up to challenge him to a arrow deflection challenge. <laughs> we'll, we'll get uh, Dudley here to, you know, Fire a few arrows at some, us. Some kind of wager? I'm thinking about it. Mm, I'm going to take another drink of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he could dodge an arrow with that flip. And we'll kind of look back and chuckle. <laughs> In my time, I've four. seen all kinds of manner of tactics on the battlefield. And um, something so uh, flamboyant could have its uses. Imagine if you will. You're standing against a small unit, and you're trying to decide who you want to pluck out first. And then one of them, dressed very flamboyantly, begins to backflip around a little bit. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to kill that one first? I, I, I hate you so much more because I'm thinking of that Eddie Izzard skit. The all, all side I honestly think game. that Octavius is the love child of Adam Adam Lambert and um, Keanu Reeves. Like, if the two of them had a baby, that's Keanu, who Octavius like would be. Lamb Keanu Reeves. <laughs> La uh, I just Reeves. heard the words like a glam Keanu. <coughs> yeah, that's about this it. Is that's why I that's play what he is. <laughs> Excuse this me. This is what I'm here for. Um. So, so as, as after you say that to me, I'm gonna say, uh, uh, I'm just gonna say, we'd have to um, get in that situation sooner rather than later. Else, well, you know. Well, as unpleasant as this land has become. I feel it's only a matter of time before something vile and unpleasant crosses our path again. Ah, uh, true. I'm not Should opposed we... to having greater numbers for things to have to, um, decide on who or what they would rather slaughter first. 
If he's useless, well, um, he might save one of our lives, and if he turns out to be of any value, well, um, well, then he'd be an asset that way. Seems to me it's a win-win. I think he should bunk with, uh, Dudley. Uh, we might have more in common, you know. That worries me a little. <laughs> Dudley being a young, impressionable lad. <laughs> I'm just gonna awkwardly sip more vodka juice. <laughs> more vodka juice! <laughs> <laughs> so when are the when are the interactions with Octavius was going on? Where was Emery? Emery was standing kind of I, I guess like because the way I have it pictured in my head right now it's uh Emery is standing next to Dudley and Dudley got all wowed so then Emery's basically there with Dudley watching Octavius do backflips inanely. But you haven't had any interaction with him yet. Uh, I've had a very brief conversation with him. I'm just trying to make any sense out of his existence. Okay, um... So... Good luck. Oberon is holding up his fork, um, and is like... flipping it backwards and forwards to try to get Emery's attention. Oh. Sorry, I was, um... pondering. A little... Why don't you, uh, why don't you come and ponder over here a little? Just a little. <laughs> Are you gonna finish that? <laughs> I'm gonna... Because <laughs> his has the pepper, I'm gonna try his, hopefully it's Oh, better. there's plenty. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of like, oh... Here. And then I'll hand him the fork. <laughs> uh, Alright. How... So what's, so, um... what's the problem here? What Other do you than... make of that strange fellow in the corner, flipping around? Well, some sort of circus performer. That was my first thought. Then I started thinking about it. He was asking if we're some kind of do-good traveling group, and part of me is wondering if he came out of one of those somehow alive in a flamboyant pink shirt after directing all of the. Hostile energy directly toward him, regardless. As we're having this conversation, Oberdon is listening with one ear, but he is now starting to try to size up um, Octavius. I'm less interested in what he is wearing color wise and more what he is carrying or potentially possibly wielding. Roll me sense motive. And while we're at it, uh, Octavius, roll me bluff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, that's really bad. Okay. Oh, so is mine. Don't worry. <laughs> mine is worse. <laughs> so, so, uh, so do I delete the, just the, W slash GM and that the ampersand as well or no? No, you, not you the keep ampersand. that in. No, just just, just the, get rid of the slash the the okay. slash W G. And that should work. Yeah. All right. So, uh, with a roll of four from Oberdon and a fifteen from Octavius. What Octavia, what Oberdon gets sizing up Octavius is going to be what Octavius wants to project. Right. So, Octavius, what does Oberdon get when he sizes you up? Um. Hmm. Well, let's just say you sense some sort of a shifting enigma that cannot be described by mere thoughts or feelings. You look at me and you could tell there's so much potential lying underneath but it's being very subdued and kept back but you know in your heart of hearts something magical lies beneath <laughs> damn i wait i i drew a lot from in that glance <laughs> so so uh, earlier i sent i said earlier i sent jane a message saying i am going to feel so bad killing this poor halfling I am not going to feel the slightest bit bad killing this shit out of Octavius. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, what? What? So, what weapons do you actually have? Like they're uh, visible. No, so, so yeah. So you can. I mean, really, you can. Um, you can tell that I have two weapons on me. They're not like brandished like um, a soldier would or, or an actual active adventurer would. Um, you can kind of see just from my very form-fitting clothing that I do have something on me uh, it looks like two two weapons you could probably make out with your background as short swords okay um and i do have um 
uh, like a leatherish type looking armor. So I'm 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 ready in case something goes down, but it's not. I'm I'm trying to have so many other things take away from from that. Okay. So you can see that I'm I'm ready for something, but that's not. I, I'm not trying to give that off when I first walk into a situation or gotcha. into a room. Right. Okay. So after rec- after coming up with this. Um overview this synopsis of who he is i look back at um horthric and say well i think there's much more than meets the eye there with that young man first of all he carries short swords and two which means he believes in the dexterous method of fighting versus brute force secondly he is clearly con- concealing some sort of light armor i would suspect that he is some sort of um efficient scout that is doing some sort of ruse to make us feel like he is a little bit more of a uh, charlatan than a a capable and able-bodied combatant but i believe that he may actually be more useful than we can uh, initially determine Seems an odd strategy, trying to win your way into a crowd by convincing them you're less useful than you are. But perhaps he believes that we are in need of entertainment more than assistance in combat. Uh, I have more, I, I have reason to suspect that he's not really in it for what he says he is. But he doesn't really say what he's in it for, he just wants in. So he just randomly wants to join us because he believes that we're a band of wandering, what was it you said, Dudley, do-gooders? Mm-hmm. I'm not around. That, that's Dudley? What he, that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he said. That's Where did the said. boy go? He's, where, what so, is Dudley, Dudley doing with Dudley, right now? Ro- roll me a fortitude save, Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how badly the splash potatoes has taken hold of Dudley. Okay, okay. Splash potatoes. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. So, uh, so, Oberdon, not oh, Oberdon. God. Octavius, what is your best? What is your best social skill? Uh, just disarming, disarming people like emotionally, like getting them to just like me pretty quick. All right. So Dudley is getting that full blast, right, in the spirit of that absurdly well-rolled backflip, and also getting it more so because Dudley is also getting splash potatoes. Full blast. <laughs> he's become a fanboy. <laughs> he's, like, he's like that beaver fella to him, isn't he? <laughs> the I Justin Bieber can girl. You do that? Can you do that backflip again, please? I missed it, I blinked, but uh, I really just want to see it again. I could, but I don't want to overindulge. Please! No. Please do it. Uh, I've never seen something like that before. Not even Beaver could do that one. Here, well, that's because Beaver doesn't have the skill set I do. Haven't met too many people who have. Speaking of skill sets, since you're so eager, yeah, why don't yeah. you try doing that back? <laughs> you think I'm capable? You got much well, longer legs than me. I can't well, know. Well, I can help you out by sort of, I guess, spotting you. Can spot you. Me? Yeah, give it. We'll 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 give it a whirl. I mean, life's well, all about taking adventures and chances, right? Well, earn me my badge. Well, Absolutely, I, will. I think we. <laughs> yeah. Take yeah. I'm gonna set down my drink and die. <laughs> <laughs> I set down my drink. I take off my sling. I set it down. All everything on me. I just start taking off, except my clothes. I'm like, all right, just let me situate myself here. I lay it down. Okay, here now, I go. Now, okay, wait, Dudley. What? There's something very important I need you to do first, and I I, I feel like this is going to be something hard for you to do. What is it? I, I need right. you to. Calm and clear your I'm mind. Calm. Prove it. <laughs> can I do it now? That was exactly <laughs> what I was hoping for. Absolutely, you can do it now. Thank you. And I'm going to just kind of take position on the side of, 
of Dudley here and just wait to see what he does. <laughs> so you were trying to interact with whatever he does to try yes. to spot Help what. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm going to kind of squat him. down, bend my knees, yeah. uh, shoulder width apart. Three, two, one. I bend down and then I'm just going to go <laughs> and like spring backwards and see what happens. I'm going to do my best to spot him. Squeeze. All right. Uh, all right. So, uh, I'm gonna say you you are absolutely trashed minus five, but <laughs> but you are receiving spotting plus two, so give me minus jump three. minus three. All right, <laughs> all right, take minus three off of this, please. Oh. Oh. So I'm five. envisioning I'm envisioning Nine, Dudley. Six. I got this. I got this. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm envisioning this. Right. Dudley goes like this. Uh, it, it's just a jump backwards, uh-huh. and like <laughs> laying almost getting like flat. Right. But you're spotting Dudley. So you grab Dudley, and Dudley does not do the flip. But you can like Dudley's a halfling, <laughs> like it's like picking up a child. So Dudley jumps back. You grab Dudley and manage to like make Dudley turn over but then dudley being drunk can't land it even with the spotting and falls flat on his butt (laughs) oh Oh, i did it i did it (laughs) well sort of dudley now do you know do you know why you failed i didn't fail i okay yeah i fell on my face but Right. Okay, maybe I failed. Maybe let I me failed. let me rephrase the question. Did you look like? Do you think you look like me when you did it? Uh, I would have to trade shirts with you. Do you want to trade shirts? <laughs> no, absolutely not. This is right. my this is one of my favorite shirts, obviously. But okay, lesson number one for backflipping. Backflipping. Okay? Yeah, lesson number one, and this is the key reason of why you failed. Oh, the shirts. Yeah, I get it. No, not the shirt. I need you to listen. Sorry. Please. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Just... Things are getting dizzy. Oh, need... I'm backflip. I'm backflipping again, and I <laughs> fall over. <laughs> okay, seeing all the commotion, <laughs> Obertan nudges <laughs> nudges Yorthric and says, "And this is what happens when we allow him to drink." I think we should get him a bed. And uh, with that off. being said, I glance around. Are there any stairs? Is there anything to lead me to believe that this actually has? Was this multiple stories when we came in yeah. here? It was not. It is a single story building. Okay. Um. Does it look like there's possibly actual rooms to stay in, or does this literally look more like a tavern? There's a place to drink, but there is no. Yeah. This this looks like a tavern. That's what I figured. I said um. I think he's probably best if we drag him outside and uh, let him speak with, uh, let him sleep with Rankin Samuelson. At that point, the orc will grunt up, says, "Mm -mm, bad idea. Oh, really? And uh, why would that be my large toothed friend? Nobody sleeps outside and comes back in. Uh, they get you. What's the, they? What is they? Mm. Uh, well, at this I point, know. I look the at or- look- <laughs> the orc looks you dead in the eye and says, "I don't know. I ain't got got yet." <laughs> I look at the glass or the mug of probably two quarters left or half left of vodka and put it down rather seriously. Hmm. And, um, exactly how many people have been gotten? Do you know? Since, uh, past week, it's been about five gots. Five gots this <laughs> week. Now, is that five gots this week, or is that five gots, period, but it only started this week? This is... No, nah, it's five gots this week. But prior uh, to that, nothing bad at well. He says the gutting hadn't happened. After the first week, locals stopped going outside at night. So From what happened on, to make them go out this last week? 
He's just, hell if I know. <clears throat> folks gotta run to the store. Some folks wander home from the tavern. Uh, and what of the steeds in the stables? Yes, what of the steeds? He says, we got a policy where we don't take the horses until it's been about a month. So far, we've only taken in one. That one but sold real fast. Martha sucks at cooking meat. <laughs> <laughs> but the horses, whatever it is that's doing the um getting, Body. doesn't pay any heed to the horses. Is that what you're saying? Not that I noticed. The horses that are in the stable now, when we arrived, there appeared to be two that represented a brand from a farm just down the road. How long have they been there? Mm, about three days. They like to leave them out here, advertising for the ranch. I see. So the owners are, as far as you know, still alive and well. They don't drink, so I don't know them. Hmm. Very, very curious, Hjothric. Yes, uh... Do everybody in here stay in here, or do they go home before night falls? <laughs> Depends on how drunk or how depressed they get. I'm doing another bad flip. That's all you hear when you after you say that one. No, no, Dudley, no. This is every is like stealing off and be like, no, no, no. <laughs> Perhaps we should have a look around and see what we can find out this evening. A little bit of a Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Um I say there What was his name? The the pink thing. Uh, I the shirt. Call him but the orc leans, orc leans in and says, I think, go away is his name. That's what most people call him <laughs> around here. Oh, no, no. I, I, um, I have great need of his talents and services. <laughs> um, um, those doors is up to you. Yes, uh, well, what was his name, your three? What did he say his name was? Uh, I call him O. O. <laughs> I'm not yelling O across the two. I uh, off the no. bar to random stranger. Only because he wanted to call me Thurk, and that I wasn't having, so I shortened his name. It's it's Otto, and I'm gonna roll my eyes Otto. as I look at the orc. He's gonna say that with a roll of his eyes <laughs> in the back of his throat, like Otto. Otto. Um, o Otto, Otto. Um, oh um, yes, the 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 uh, aforementioned other party member. Uh, yes, uh, my name Good is day. my name is O. Obi. Ah, Obi. You know what? I like that. I like that. That's um, good. Yes, though, so, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that you are an excellent acrobat. My compliments to your abilities. Well, thank you. They're not for the sole purpose of gaining compliments from strangers, but... And I still do, do have some training left to do to, to really bring it to the next level. Oh, but yes, I appreciate indeed. the sentiments. Um, anybody that believes they have mastered something still has a lot to learn. Life's all about growing. Hmm. Uh, my uh, companions here, they mentioned to me that you were interested in possibly joining our company, tagging along as it were. Uh, absolutely. I want just to feel like I'm doing my part uh, to help everybody. Um, get back to the way things were before. You, you want to be youthful. Well, yeah. If well, we you want, want to, to shorten it help. To that. You want to um, rise above the boring station of an average person and become somebody of worth. I, I, I fully understand. Well, worth is is so subjective. I just want I want people to know what when they call on Octavius, they're calling on goodness. The um. The skills that you have uh, clearly mastered, well, come close to mastering, to uh, flip as you do so effortlessly. I would also assume that uh, that means you're very, very light on your feet. Probably um, quite quiet, if you wanted to be. Well, I 
try my best to go through life as in the shadows as possible. Sometimes I mean literally, sometimes I just mean hanging back to watch the world move around me. This is why just you wear bright pink, is it? To blend in. <laughs> well, that depends. Sometimes you blend in the most when you're right in front of someone's face. Right, right. Well, uh, uh how is the moon outside? <laughs> what a great question. I'm not asking you, it. I'm asking Squeegee. That's why no, I broke I know, voice. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's so good. <laughs> Such a DM question. I love it. The moon is, is first off, the moon has, has been choking slowly to death ever since the fall. <laughs> Second off, it's oh. been hiding behind <coughs> clouds for the for past several days. It's it's as if you are waiting to one day hear from the scholars and the mages. So the moon's come back. <laughs> that the that the that the moon has come back, or that the moon will never be back. So it is very dark outside, typically. Yeah, the moon went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came home. Gotcha, perfect. Um, well, um, in the darkness of the shadows outside, uh, I don't really think it matters too much what the color of your clothing is, more the stealthiness of your step. Well, I do have a few tricks up my sleeves. Yes, well, um, it would appear that this town, village, is besieged by something unpleasant. Hmm. Um, I heard that you were interested in doing good, you said. Yeah, anything I could do to, to help my fellow man, woman, what have you, I, I will do what I can. Well, um, usually we would request the services of young Dudley, but seeing as he is shit-faced beyond compare, yeah, who let um, him have that, by the way? I feel like you should have been a better parental figure, his, sir. I uh, questioned the value of him being occupied. It. Um, the orc? <laughs> well, the orc will just say, I did. Oh. Don't you have to have some sort of, uh, never mind. Forget <laughs> it. He didn't card him. <laughs> yeah. Your liquor license is going away, <laughs> sir. Well, without the badge. <laughs> yeah. Alcohol, yeah. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearm. The mountain um, I'm of sorry. muscle is like, yeah, that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if it is your establishment, I guess you could do as you will, sir. Damn right, I will. <laughs> All right. Um, so we have a little predicament. One that I think you would be in uh, an excellent position to assist us with. Probably um, prove your value and your quality and worth. Did you not see that backflip I just did? I think I've shown proof enough. Um, you have shown that you are very dexterous and that you have incredible acrobatic skills, of which I am in admiration of. But there are other things that we would, uh... We put ourselves into some very difficult, dangerous situations, and I wouldn't want to take anybody that didn't have the survival skills to back it up into harm's way. <sighs> With that being said, um, while I'm not necessarily suggesting we should try to solve the problem this very night, I would at least think that we should have a snoop around and see if we can see what it is that lurks out there in the dark, in the depths of the night. Heavy, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, I can get behind that. Like that. The, orc, the orc will point at, at, at Obi. <laughs> and uh and he says i like how you think and then he nods to octavius no the orc who was five seconds ago talking about how everybody gets got is like yes we should send octavius out. <laughs> i had a feeling the orc might like this idea that was partly my uh my my provision with it um he says orc says uh i know where you can go looking if you need to snoop oh so you have a lead oh sure please enlighten me it's in my interest to make the path between my establishment and everywhere else as safe as possible. So I usually make it my business to hear about when the gottening happens. The gottening. The gottening. <laughs> That's like a bad sequel to The Happening. Right? Yes! <laughs> it's, like, it's like a better the gottening. Happening. It's clearly a better, better sequel. He says, uh, <laughs> most, most, not all, but most of the dis disappearances have happened between here. I need a name. I need a name. Let me give me a name. Any name. 
John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Northington. Did you say John Cena? <laughs> John Cena. No, 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 no. It says between on the road between here and Cena Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But how far is Cena Ranch from here? He says, uh, well, they walk here every now and then. So I'm guessing less than a day. It should have passed it on the way in. Day. Hmm. Do you have a hole? I don't call Cena Ranch. He says, uh, if you want to return one of the Cena horses to the ranch, you could do it that way. Parked right outside. Excellent. Ah, okay, at this point, now I'm looking for a table. Okay, there, there are tables. The place is not packed. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, slide the unfinished vodka across the across the bar. Um, excellent. And the uh, roasted potatoes. My compliments to the chef. Hey, Martha. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, what do we owe you for this evening's, um, libation? Like a, a really reasonable price. Uh, it's, I think it's, it'll probably be like two silver for the whole package that everybody got, including the vodka, or a silver. I don't, I'd have to look it up in the books. But no, that's fine. I know if you, if you, you say two silver, I will give him two silver. Yeah, sure, we'll call it two silver for now. Okay, all right. And if in the future I learn that that was an unreasonable price, we'll adjust. Then clearly he was just very cheap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um... Uh, I mean, we're not we're not paying for room, so it's probably uh, it's something like that. It's not gonna be too far off. All right, so I'm gonna give him two silver. Yep. Um, and then I'm gonna throw two copper on the bar as a tip, just as an afterthought. Like, psh, give him that. Go to turn away, and then pause and hand him the extra two copper. Um, his entire demeanor changes when you tip him. You just earned yourself a reliable source of information. <laughs> and then I'm going to look at him and say, um, we'll see what we can do about your predicament. He says, uh, good luck. Last crew that came in didn't come home. Interesting. Yeah, but could the last crew do this? And I back to the <laughs> <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. And he does a pirouette <laughs> followed by a... <laughs> Um, okay, with that, I'm going to kind of give Octavius the the kind of proverbial nod towards the, the table and head over to the table, picking one as far away from everything as possible so that we have a, as, as much privacy as is feasible. As soon place. as you approach a corner of the room, the one person in that quadrant of the building will just happen to have the idea to, like, up and move to a different <laughs> table as Octavius moves towards the... Uh, Towards the end of the room. Alright, um. pretty respectful of my Is he sober? Here. Is the guy sober? No. He's, He's pretty like drunk? Drunkenly shuffling, yeah. Uh, does he have a drink currently? Yes. Okay, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I would have bought him a drink if that was the case, but if he's got one, he doesn't need another. Nah, it's like sloshing out of his <laughs> mug and like he's. You only need like... one of these in, <laughs> in yeah. this establishment. Um, okay, so go and get to the table. Um, and if if the others haven't kind of followed us over there, I'll just kind of give them a subtle. I, I'm I'm gonna turn to the orc before I head over there and be like, "You don't happen to have any water for the little one, do you?" Yeah, water's on the house. I would hope so. <laughs> I take the water, and I don't even say thanks. I'm not warming up to this orc. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Dudley and be like. More vodka for you. Uh, I'm lying on the ground, looking up at the ceiling, smiling. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pour hi. some water on Dudley's face. I, um, I'm gonna kind of look at you and say, "One second, pass me the jug." Uh, uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hand it to him. Okay, um, taking it. It's just water. Oberdon just holds it in front of him. Looks up at the sky, raising a left hand, and says, Adalis, aid me. Purify the stench of evil that may be contained in the waters of life. And I cast, um, Bless Water. 
Okay. Um, and then I hand it back to him and say, maybe that will assist in getting rid of the evils of alcohol. I seriously <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to, like, prop Dudley up so he's at least sitting upright. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe drag yeah, him thanks, to a table thanks. leg that he could lean against because he's small <laughs> and a child. Exactly. I can stand up if I want. I was just, just admiring the sky. Just stay there for a second. Drink this vodka. It's been blessed by a priest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put this jug in his hands. I'm going to drink, drink it all. The, I'm going to drink the blessed vodka <laughs> it's got as the, fast the, as I can. The blessing has taken a lot of the kick and the bite out of this vodka. It's <laughs> it really, really has. You should get all your vodka blessed. <coughs> this stuff's great. I'm gonna keep drinking it. <laughs> yeah, it's very refreshing. I'm gonna go to the table and listen in on what's on there. So, um, it seems that people have been disappearing on the road between here and some ranch, and our good new friend here, Otto, has uh, volunteered to participate in a little bit of a scouting mission. Yeah, anyone I can pitch in would be would be great. Now, I ask, if it's a day's travel from here to Cena Ranch, am I going to be making that journey alone? Or are you going to be giving me some sort of backup? Well, um, this is the question, isn't it? Because if it's a day's travel and we leave now, it'll be during the night where we'll be doing the traveling, which is most likely to result in unpleasantries happening. Or we could leave in the morning and get to the ranch. It's unfortunate that we don't know whether the incidences are happening closer to town or closer to the ranch. True. We also have a little guy back there who would not be of any use to us at the moment. No, but I certainly don't want to leave him here by himself. <laughs> but I certainly don't want to bring him out there when they're looking for those to get. Then perhaps we should... Stay here the night. Let him sober up and uh, go and look for any form of evidence in the morning. I, um, now I think of it, the, the lay of the land, it was all um, very potato y around here. <laughs> there was the one building on the way in uh, quite some time before we got in that might have been the ranch. Is that the direction? Uh, go back to the orc real quick. I think, um. Yeah. I, I feel rather embarrassed, but I never asked your name. Grok. Grok? Well, um, Grok. 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 Which direction? If we were to leave the door, would we turn left or right to go to this Cena ranch? That way. Which way does he point? He points in uh, the direction you came in from. Okay, so so basically, so it sounds like that um, what Emery was pointing out is probably factual. Then that that is a yep. good chance that that was the ranch. Yep. Okay. In that case, we know how far it was, right? So oh, how long? Does yeah. Yeah. So how long? When when you how far is that, Emery? To travel to the ranch, how long would it take us on foot? Be more than four hours. I mean, it would be more than that right now with him stumbling about. Well, but... we could always lay him across the back of the donkey. Mm. I'm sure I'm Rankin thinking. Samuelson would not object. I mean, we are trying to root out this dark evil that's attacking these people. So, why wait until the next day and then have to wait till the following night when we can just maybe get them to come out now. Well, sooner like. My reasoning would be because we don't know what we're stumbling into if we just go wandering off into the dark. Perhaps in the morrow we can investigate a little bit about the ranch and set up more of a game plan for the following night. Be more prepared. I don't like to start fights with things that I don't know who they are and how many their number is. But if you're all feeling adventurous and want to go off into the darkness with one drunken boy and a donkey, far be it from me to dissuade you. I think 
we're both pretty aware that that's not. Title not of this episode. That. One chunk of boy and a donkey. <laughs> Just saying. That's what it is. They would appear. We're waiting till tomorrow then. Very well. Um. Would give us some time to, I guess, prepare. I mean, I would benefit from, I guess, adjusting my meditation in the morning. <clears throat> oh, you meditate too. <laughs> Meditate on I, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I knew I I knew we were on that same wavelength. Yeah, to- totally. Yeah, Absolutely. I think. Hey, you know what, Em? I think you and I are gonna get along just fine. <laughs> yeah, Tabby, we sure will. Ah, uh, are you excited? As as are you as excited as I am right now? <laughs> I just can't wait to go potentially get murdered by whatever's out there. I will be fine. <laughs> just have to be like water. Just to flow. That's it. That's it. That's that's what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've just met it's the avatar of our god there. <laughs> He's just following the natural course of life, and it will see him. Adonis will treat you well. That's just what I say. <laughs> <laughs> This are his new song lyrics that he's working on, I reckon. <laughs> oh my god. Man. Um, I guess there's plenty of room here in the bar, right? Just to... Well, I mean, yeah, if, if, if uh, like, from what the orc has told you, people go missing when they go home from the bar. And there are drunk people in the bar right now, and the sun has definitely set. So you're gonna guess they probably wait until sunrise. Right, that's what I think. The orc doesn't seem to be throwing anybody out. Then I think that that's what I want to do. I'm gonna yep. find myself a corner, um, and take off my backpack, set everything in the corner around where I'm gonna sleep, and then kind of take out the. I'm not gonna unroll the bedroll. I'm just gonna pull it out, lay it on the floor, and use it as a pillow. Yeah. I'm doing more or less the same thing. All right. I probably just pass out, leaned out, leaned against that <laughs> just table that you probably <laughs> me get to. Because yeah. so all the pain in your neck when you wake up. All right. Up. So how much time do we have left? Probably be like setting um, him up. Well, that depends. Because technically, 15 minutes, but we were really late starting. So if you guys want to go another and a little bit longer, I'm fine with that. But I don't want to put words into anybody else's mouth. Oh, what's what's tomorrow? Friday? Yeah. Yeah, I got time. You wanna? So I I can go if y'all can. Just go another fifteen. I, mean, I could go another thirty, forty-five. Okay, then let's let's push it let's to keep on, uh, keep it on. Let's do that. Right, let's, let's keep let's let's, let's push it to a, eleven then. So that's forty-five yeah, okay. minutes. There you go. Cool. Let's let's take let's take a break here before. We yeah, we'll off. do that. That sounds good. Um, all right, so we'll take a very short break, and then we'll be back, and we'll uh, continue on. We'll do what we normally do, and we'll uh, split the break. Um, three and three. So um, we'll let Squeegee, um, Octavius, and Drunk Boy uh, take a short break. Uh, we'll uh, do a and a while they're gone, and then when they come back, we will uh, swap it up. So. Shag, were you, were you asking to take a break yeah, there, Yeah, I need to take a little break. Oh, you need to go I'll- now? We can yeah. switch. If we'll you switch want, it up okay. then. We'll go the other way. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. <clears throat> all right. Cool. Okay. Um, so let's uh, shut or shag it. Yeah. So we're. I, I think the last thing we were all betting down for the night then. Yeah. All betting down for the night. Uh, the next morning, the orc who apparently doesn't sleep is still cleaning a glass behind the bar, as all members of his profession are eternally doing. <laughs> that's it. That, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, I can picture the token now. Uh, right. <laughs> Everybody, everybody has cleared out by the time you guys wake up. You're the only ones in the tavern. Okay. Except um, for the mug and the and the orc. Rock. Eh, rock. That was it. Rock. Um. Oh. Ah, and I get my stiff old weary bones up off the off the floor and <laughs> crack my back. Ah. Humans. Slide my bedroll back into the top of my backpack and say, um, 
I was going to ask you a very stupid question, but I'm going to re probably phrase it into the fact to say, do you have, do you know how to make potato pancakes? Potato cakes. Uh, Quite honestly, I'm just in the mood for something for breakfast, and I know that the only thing you seem to have on the menu is potatoes. You don't happen to have a couple of chickens floating around outside, do you? <laughs> he says, uh, we used to. But they were gotten. <laughs> he says, <laughs> the fall corrupted the landscape. Stupid oh. potatoes, the only fucking thing that grows out here. Yeah, it's a very hard to understand. Um, potatoes and horses. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> whatever so breakfast you can come up with, grow horses. Um, themes <laughs> will be adequate. Uh, uh, one more question. Um, about a month or so ago, a fellow might have come by here. I don't know if you have much of a memory for faces. He this... would have had a donkey with him. A month ago. And I'll give him a I'll give him the best description that I can think of. Um basically um he was a tall fellow, probably about an inch or so taller than I. Um, Is the donkey with him? Sickly looking thing with a weird donkey shoe. Yes, that's exactly it. He did indeed have a weird donkey shoe about him. This is <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it's that a, you remember mm. that particular detail about everything else. You know how it is I got into human lands. No, no, please, uh, do uh, regale me with the tale. This is uh, when I was a uh, little orkling. Any motions? Slightly shorter than he actually is, <laughs> but still taller than all of you, right? <laughs> he says, uh... Chieftain of my tribe decided he wanted to open up trade with the humans. We were on the border keep just around here. Back then, that was a pretty revolutionary thing. Back when, you know, there was an empire. I didn't like it. Mostly because I didn't like the guy in charge of Westington. People tend to vanish from the tribe and I had my money on him. One day he came in, and I asked him if he had anything to do with it, and he said no. And I warned him that if I came into town and I saw anybody that I remembered nosing around my turf, I'd make trouble. He thought I was a dumb, stupid orc. Well, I got him. Recognized a human that had been nosing around my tribe's turf about uh, two years ago. Called him out, called him over. Of course, he denied it. So I killed them both. Town chased me out. That didn't go so well. Anyways, uh, when my tribe heard that I had been chased out of town, they were up and roaring to level the place. I said, go ahead. But when they showed up, everybody decided it was going to be me versus whatever human peon they had defending the village rather than killing everybody. Some sort of trial by combat or whatever weird human shit y'all are into. <laughs> so there I am, and it's me and my brother arguing about who's going to be champion for the fight. Uh, your brother, uh, older brother, younger brother? Uh... My eldest brother at the time. Be bigger than you? Much. Much? Much bigger. Well, um, I was the one. This is uh, which is why he didn't want me going in because he thought I might actually lose a fight to a friggin' human. Nice. So I told him to shut up the way we do. And uh, somewhere in the arguing, folks in town here had gotten the impression my brother was the champion, being that he was the big one and all. So when I'm standing there over my brother's dead body, I won. They asked me what I wanted, and I said a drink. They thought I was funny, and now I'm here. The point is, I never forget a face. Excellent. Turned um, through this <laughs> fellow with uh, the donkey, with the lapse footing, the unfortunate footwear situation. Um, 
came in uh, right about the time the Gottenen started. Oh, really? Yeah. And he left? With his donkey. Said he was going to go look into it. Told me not to expect him back. Hey, he did tell you that, did he? Him back. Yeah, he's an old ass man. I don't think he's coming back. Well, um... Yes, that's indeed, indeed a little worrying. Um, he is a relative of mine, one that I'm looking for. Um, mm. Make the uh, need to investigate into the situation doubly important to me. Well, he went to go talk to Cena Ranch first. Well, um, I do believe that that is our first port of call this morning. Uh, you've been most helpful, um... Uh, so yeah, I'll take up no more of your time. Obviously, you need to be spending it making our breakfast. Um, but um, <laughs> we'll uh, ensure that you're amply rewarded for your delicious potatoy delights. Potato cake's coming right up. And then he will push the door open and <laughs> clang his head, like like clang a metal thing, like a spoon or something against a bunch of pans. Martha, wake up! Clang, clang, Martha! <laughs> It'll be clanging and shattering and roaring and yelling coming from wow. the <laughs> Look at Hawthrick and say, I would have requested hash browns, but I have a feeling that they would have been the size of French fries. How does his story have anything to do with recognizing faces? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it was the guy in the town that he recognized, which led to the fight. Um... It kind of got buried in, <laughs> in the story itself, but, um... Thank you, Emery, I, I missed that part. Yes, yeah, clearly. It was missable. Grok's, um, forte <laughs> is in beating things senseless, polishing glasses, and ordering Martha to cook food. I think he doesn't exactly possess much of a talent for storytelling. And, and yet he's afraid to go outside where people get caught. But I don't recall him saying he was afraid at any point. <laughs> you definitely get the idea if, if he is afraid, then we should probably be very wary. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely seemed to think you had reason to be afraid, but he himself never expressed any fear. Yes, uh... You're missing everything today, Hork York. Hork York? <laughs> Right, I'm going to take a good look. I, I kind of get on an eye-to-eye -eye level with um, Dudley and look at him closely and see how much signs of wear and tear from the night before that he seems to be. For the third time tonight, give me a fortitude save. Okay. Coming right up. Fortitude save. Fortitude. Come on. Please pass. How oh, everyone calls me something different oh my oh, god man i'm rolling so badly <laughs> oh, like you rolled a seven however that was blessed water right uh, i did bless i did bless the um the water have, before he drank it yeah. you have the tiniest hang <coughs> that, that but it's it's it's, it's minuscule at most okay. okay he's looking at me i say tiny hangover for a tiny guy <laughs> yes and a very large amount of alcohol that got you in that state I don't really remember much. Who's that guy? I'm going to point at Otto. <laughs> oh, uh, that's your new best friend. Oh, what, if, what if I told you that you did the most amazing backflip in your life last night? <laughs> I'd say you're lying. <laughs> uh, let me tell you one thing Otto doesn't do, and that's lie. Can I get a sense motive on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, you can. Give me bluff and sense motive. Well, I, I haven't lied yet. Yeah, but that's not what you said, now is it? That's true, that's true, that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, Ooh. 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 You are very certain that he does a lot of lying. <laughs> that said, you're also pretty certain that might have been the most amazing backflip that Dudley has ever performed. <laughs> Yeah, it might have been the so best one Dudley's ever that performed. It might have been more interesting when we got <laughs> that scrap with the bandits. But, <laughs> but that wasn't intentional. <laughs> so technically... <laughs> Otto, come here. Yeah, little guy? Are you one of the good guys? 
Yeah, we went, oh, oh, you don't remember anything from last night, do you? <sighs> as much as the boy drunk on the prize, he remembers his own name. Do you know your name? <laughs> Actually, I remember one thing from last night. Duds. Yeah, that was the nickname I bestowed upon you. Oh, okay. Feel free to right. use it as much as you... Actually, everyone, please, feel free to use any of the names I gave all of you. <laughs> Freely. <laughs> That's my first gift to you, other than that backflip, of course. So really, I have come to the table with not one, but two gifts for all of you to take away from this. You're welcome. Are you joining our party? Well, that's to be seen. Apparently, I think it's your dad has some sort of a test for me. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Oh, no. Um, you are quite mistaken. There is no biological uh, connection no, between me and the boy. I think my dad's in this town, maybe. <sighs> yeah, I remember you saying that. I thought maybe you were just were a little out of your mind and didn't realize that's your dad. <laughs> my mistake let me just back up a little bit here and readdress the question. Your f older friend has some sort of a test for me that I believe I will pass with the flyingest of colors and be <laughs> and be welcomed into your group so we can right the wrongs that have befallen on this land. It's and true. They made me do a test too. Yeah. Oh, what did you have to do? Well, they kind of just put me into a river and they told me to swim. Oh, and the maybe... sort of solution, I see. And hearing Not that, cool. I'm looking at him. And then I turned around and they were gone. And I thought, this is a good test. So I went and found them. I reach, I'm going to reach into um, my bag and yep. pull out a strip of leather that I've cut and, and like tear a square of it off. Um, <laughs> and then with the, the point of my boot knife, I kind of begin to carve a little stick figure doing a handstand on it. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> the yes, then, uh, if you pass the test, uh, much like Dudley here, I will bestow one of these patches of, uh, noti of notoriety upon you. Here's a, here's a patch for you, Dudley. This is for your ability to almost oh. do a handstand. Oh! Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, congratulations, Duds. That's Thank great. You. Overdone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes, you. Um, <laughs> kind of leaning into Horthrick, I think, it's amazing how such a small amount of motivation propels him forth, isn't it? Well, the way I see it, with uh, life expectancy so drawn short by the natural way of things as they've changed, you kind of have to squeeze as much life in as you can, and it works for him. Quite. Quite. I'm, I'm gonna would, go in the corner and sew the thing on my... On it, my it would be better if it was made out of some kind of stone or metalwork, no? I mean... I'm, yes. I'm getting some xenophobia from you right now. <laughs> very difficult to sew, though. <laughs> a piece of metal would be very tough for the boy to sew upon his tunic. True. Maybe we can... Maybe you can buy him some, like, breastplate or something we could etch you know could as you like imagine? ceremonial piece oh could you imagine him running up to the forefront in his <laughs> ceremonial breastplate one of those flamboyant ones that's pointy at the front and lots of yeah. engraving yeah 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 uh, with a little pink flute so they can match at the a fluffy pink f cape flowing in the background yeah i'm all for that <laughs> God, also, um, battle. Could you imagine? Emery, did I did I hear you say that you too like to try to squeeze as much out of life as possible? Do you not see the similarities that we have going on right now? Is that um, just me, or is that just totally blowing your mind right now? I don't even think you uh, realize how similar we really are. One, one moment here. One moment here. I'm going to go ahead and walk over to what's left of a potato that we probably left. <laughs> Bring it back over. I'm gonna be like. Okay, um, and then I'm going to scratch the one side open and hold that like this facing him so that the open side's facing him and the, the, the side, other side's facing me. I'm just like, what are you looking at? 
I'm looking at something that has sprouted and grown from Mother Earth okay, itself. Okay, it's a potato. It's a potato. Well, <laughs> sure. If you want to put a label on what it, I guess. What does the potato can... look like to you from this to angle? To me? Yeah, I, I just scratched the other side it open. It looks basically. like a blank canvas that someone could paint whatever illustration they would on it. Okay, to me, it looks kind of like a turd. Oh, okay, I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll show you. And I'm going to turn yeah. it around. So now now you're looking at what I was looking at. Well, I guess I could see from your perspective where it's it would look like... It's the same thing. I'm going to tilt it up and it's just like, we're looking at the same thing, opposite ends. You exactly, like that's what I'm... That's what tell I'm... people what they want to hear. Yes! But it's all part of the same but thing. But in the end, we're, we're the all same. Going to die. Yes. The same person. Mm. Yes, you get it. Oh, and that makes me so this happy. This is to so hear. much fun. This is so. Much fun. <laughs> Why didn't we find him sooner? Poor priest. <laughs> right. Um. I'm going to go outside and check on Rink and Samuel and uh, do my morning rituals to Adalis. If you uh, need me, I'll be in the stables. Okay. <clears throat> um, the stable master is still sleeping. The money that was in the box is gone. <laughs> the donkey is still there. The horses are still there. Uh, well, uh, technically the donkey is across the street, but it's still here. <laughs> okay. Nobody's watching the donkey. The donkey's like <laughs> wandered off. The, like the donkey is like eating the shrubbery that's out front of the of like a house across the street. Eating the like somebody's the personal the garden is now plants. destroyed. <laughs> like, uh, um, so whenever I see head. him, I'll be, uh, Rankin, come here, you stupid beast, and go over and grab him. <laughs> you know your father Samuel was way more, way more agreeable than you are. The donkey will uh, will stubbornly protest because these are some very delicious, sh shitty looking plants. Uh, well, seeing that, then I'm going to reach down and snatch up several handfuls and stuff them in a pouch. Uh, as soon as he <laughs> likes them, uh, I, I will. Like uh, I'll use those for blackmail at a later date with the donkey. <laughs> The, uh, the the ever-evolving relationship between a man and his donkey. That's right. <laughs> It'll be the central plot of this entire campaign. Just you wait. Okay. Um, <laughs> if this is where he wants the to BB spend the morning, the donkey kills it. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a pot of ground and get down on my knees and take out my holy symbol to Adalis and begin going through my morning prayers and rituals. Okay. Blessing, calling by name everybody that I've ever buried. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. That's gonna be a long time. <laughs> That's gonna be a bit. While the priest is morbidly recalling the end of the lives of many people he didn't know, in hopes that somebody will remember the lives of all of the people that he didn't know, uh, I imagine everybody else except for Dudley is scrambling to find an excuse to not talk to Octo. Uh, oh, and no. in agreement to this, your Thurk has left the the tavern and is leaning against one of the posts, you know, like the railing or whatever, and uh, looking at the surroundings of o Obi. I'm going to call him Obi now, because why not? Thank you, Matt. Basically <laughs> seeing if any dangers are coming while the priest is doing Orbat did that one. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, so the town is... is it's a town. I mean, these people have still given up. They're still a little lifeless, and there's... Uh, uh, a patient waiting behind everybody's eyes that fills you with a bit of you're, you're glad you haven't reached that point yet okay <laughs> but other than that there's no like real danger here right yeah there's just there's just people are giving the member of the order a wide berth they're not even really like glaring at him which is a nice change of pace you've noticed from everywhere else you've been but uh, people having given up here seems to mean that they just don't have the energy to harass or be angry anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, and M. Yes, M. <laughs> On the <laughs> inside, um, before I start my prayers, I'm actually uh, going to ask the orc, when, when he has a chance, um, if I can get the names of at least the last five who disappeared if he knew them. Or like any of the any of the people who were got, 
and I'm going to basically add their names to my list of people I need to name in my prayer because I feel personally accountable for reasons. Yeah, give, uh, give me just a second while the GM pulls up a. Uh... <laughs> well, it's okay. I mean, like, I don't, I don't want to have to like say that many hail marys over stream. It, it's gonna look like he does at the end. Okay, so he'll, he, <clears throat> I, he he will rattle off. You wanted specifically the last five to go missing, or just yeah, the total oh, yeah, list, like, list of like people that's gone missing? Names that he knew, like that I could add to the list. He will list off twenty-seven individuals. Oh, that's right, because he doesn't forget. Twenty-seven <laughs> of of which he knows fifteen names. Uh, and those but without will... names, I'd ask for a description. Yeah, he he, <laughs> he, he describes them. Uh, if any, like he, he'll describe them by just a, a singular trait, and then if you ask for more detail, he will provide more detail. It, it, a mind like a steel trap, a mind that doesn't do much but trap things, <laughs> but a mind <laughs> like a steel trap. And uh, I'm I'm going to basically add them to my ever growing list of dead people. Um, <laughs> and uh, at that point, I'm going to uh, go ahead and. Um, add very meta like go into my spells list here and <laughs> all right uh go, go, i mean as a cleric you have access to the full spell list so go nuts uh, and then uh dudley i have taken to the corner of the bar and i'm very like got my tongue out like really paying attention trying to sell this new badge onto my tunic being very careful with the way I weave the needle in and out, like I'm very, very focused on it. All right, an octagon. <laughs> so, Satch, you, Emery's pr praying slash meditating at this mm -hmm. moment. What yeah, it would yeah, seem yeah. like meditating. Okay, where are you still in the bar? Uh, yeah, I, I would basically sit back at the table since everyone's basically gone. Um, okay, I, so so I don't know if anybody would notice, but. Um, so Otto would sit far enough away to where it would look like he was separated, but he would kind of be peeking out of the side of his eye to watch what Emery is doing and almost start kind of emulating it. Um, and that's, I don't, again, I don't know if anybody notices that or even if Emery notices it unless he's too deep in his yeah, well, no, meditation. He, he would notice it and then count it out as a distraction. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, but I, I would just keep, doing that. Yeah. I would just keep <laughs> sort of like, modeling what you're doing after I watch for a little bit and just kind of hanging like that. Mm. Okay. Hear a little ow as I poke my needle in, in, in my finger. Dang it. That's all. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> praying... <laughs> praying will go by. You guys will take roughly the same amount of time. For your for your meditations, uh, feel free to between now and whenever the fight starts, construct your spell list. Mm -hmm. Fight uh, or fight? <laughs> there's a there's gonna be a fight. I'm the GM. <gasps> if okay. there's two things I do, it's one: sit back while the party makes shenanigans happen, and two: <laughs> lean in while I make the shenanigans happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that'll like I think the next thing on the the list is to head over to Cena Ranch. Yeah. All right, so after I've gone through my list of deceased people, said my prayers or whatever, I'll load all my stuff on the back of Renkin Samuelson and uh, wait patiently outside for everybody else to gather. You're, hey, you're muted. There has been a silent spell cast upon the show. Uh, I am already out there waiting as well, so... Yeah, I'll be out there too. I'll follow out Emery as soon as he's done. Okay. Um, so everybody trots out of the bar. And James Whitaker we, and we, Kyle Mooney and We head to see the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So uh the journey in in the daylight, the journey is actually a little faster than four hours. You'll make it there in three. Uh there's just you you trust the road a little more now that it's not almost pitch black by moonlight and the the that you could swear that the tree line for the forest is no longer glaring at you there are actually signs of life few and far between as they are such that they stand out and remind you that there aren't many to begin with cena ranch has a sign 
that is jabbed into the into the ground next to the path and a little winding uh it's not quite cobblestone it's a dirt road but they've clearly like spent some time putting rocks in it to make it look fancy and ultimately even more uncomfortable to walk on <laughs> uh, and that will head straight over to the ranch now uh as you guys are approaching you will notice uh a, an almost dried big huge blood stain on the front porch uh, is this uh, the building that had the door burst open that we passed earlier, or is that a different building? That's a different building. Okay. Uh, we have our first clue. The, the horses are out doing horse things in the horse space. Mm. <laughs> How many horses are there, incidentally? Uh, we'll, say there's, we'll say there's three in sight. Okay. Uh, and there was two that we brought, or there was two that they had back at the... Um, Oh, the little tavern back in Westington, right? Yes, From did here. you choose to bring one back here? Uh, I didn't. I got a donkey, but... Um... Okay. I don't think we did. Okay, so you left the two at the bar. Because uh, they were still <coughs> left there for advertising because the brand on them. Right. Is what the, is what the bartender had said. Uh, so there's, like, it's a nice house in so much as anything out here. It was probably a nice house before the fall, rather. Uh, but that blood stain looks particularly fresh, and it's it's pretty big. Uh, when you are there say tracks leading away from it, like Resh. blood tracks, or uh, no, there are tracks from the woods leading to the porch. Uh -huh. uh, are they human tracks, like boot prints, or does it look more like something like an animal? Uh, who here is? Does anybody here have any tracking skills? Um, mm. I do not. That's why I'm just kind of asking for like it a looks general... like it looks like it just looks like blood. It's not necessarily that you see footprints. So much as you see, like a blood the, trail. The, the, yeah, a blood trail. Okay. Okay. Um. Listen. One thing that I have learned to do in this kind of situation is assess the perimeters of the home before we approach completely. I say we circle around, make sure we see everything we need before we approach those footsteps. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, this is why we brought this new fellow with us. Maybe he can go with you and peruse the perimeter, as you yeah, put I mean, it. That sounds like a pretty good idea there, Duds. Uh, oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, right. I mean, it's yeah, never yeah. a bad idea to get as much information as you possibly can. Are there any open windows, or not necessarily open, but windows that are not yes. shuttered? On the side of the window, there is a presum uh, like on the side of the building, there is a window open, and there is a presumably potato pie cooling no. on the windowsill. Okay, I'm going quickly over to the pie and put my hand over top of it. Can I feel any heat? Yes. Uh, I pull my hand back really quickly and kind of squint and peer in through the window to see if I can see any signs of life. There is, uh, like, the kitchen is an absolute mess, but not in the sense that, like, it's been flipped over, but more in the sense that, like, somebody is using the shit out of this place. Right. Like, at, mm. in panic cooking or doing... Panic some, cooking pie. Panic, pie. <laughs> panic <laughs> cooking. I gotta make this pie. Uh, and, and, like, the cupboards are open and things are ripped out of the cupboards and neatly set aside on the counter, Right. Uh, as if somebody was like rummaging around looking for something but didn't want to make a mess of the place. Uh, the blood stains do continue into the house and they make a real mess of the house, but they kind of like go into the house and then turn out of line of sight into like the next room over. Was the door closed or was it already open? The door is currently open. Like okay. it's, it's a bar. Judging by the state of the kitchen, you're going to guess somebody just didn't think to close the door. Um,. In that case, I'm just going to kind of... Psst. Dudley, be careful. I believe there's still somebody inside. Yes, I will be quiet. And with that, I'm just going to kind of... Quietly as I can, which is not very quietly. Go <laughs> over to the donkey and... Um, just kind of... Based on the situation, I'm just going to... Unsheath my long sword. And then just kind of walk back. Leaving the shield, I'm not thinking that this is going to be a situation where I need to go full-on military. I'm just taking the longsword and walking over there. Um, then as an afterthought, 
I'll pull the crossbow out, um, cock it and load one bolt, but I'm not taking any additional bolts. So basically I've got the long sword in one hand and then I'm just carrying the loaded crossbow down by my side as a, you know, to get a, get a shot off should we need to, but that's about what it. Is, what is M doing? M is kind of, I guess I'd, I'd be looking at it and looking at it and hearing there's someone probably in there and everything's going on. I'm just waiting to support whoever needs help now. <laughs> <laughs> like a good cleric. Just because they heal you doesn't mean they like you. Are you are bracing your best white magics. <laughs> <laughs> and Monk? Uh, I'm standing next to Emery, uh, just watching Obi retrieve his sword and crossbow and kind of like... All right. Auto. Let's go, Auto. All right. Is, is it? Yeah. You, do you want to lead? Do you want me to lead? Like, is there? A, I don't know how your party works. I don't want to like step on anyone's toes or anything. We're still trying to figure that out, but I prefer to follow somebody. All right. Well. Okay. No problem. Then just follow my footsteps. Just do exactly what I do, and everything is gonna be fine. Great. <laughs> All right. Um. So I'm gonna as quietly as I can, start walking towards the inside of the house. All right. Are you going uh, in the house? I thought we were doing a perimeter yeah, sweep. Perimeter. Oh, I thought we did that already. I thought that's what Gord did already. I'm sorry. No, we no, I just looked, I, I just saw the open window and saw a pie. Oh, I thought you said And it was then when I realized the pie was hot, then I was like, oh shit, someone's still in here. So then, yeah. 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 So and, said, and, I thought and, did the perimeter. I, I apologize. No, no, no. So that's, then I would, I would do the perimeter search first, if that's what Dudley suggested we did. So that's what I would do. Okay. Would. Um, okay. I'm going to watch the front door. All right. Uh, roll me stealth. Both of us? Yeah. And by stealth, I mean, uh, we'll call it move silently. Okay. For now. <laughs> Great. I'm good at that. Oh, yeah, you I are. Keep rolling so low. Ugh. Yeah. Watching them walking away and being closer to the ranch with the blood stain on the front and the pie ominously slooming there. I'm the gonna... ominous <laughs> potato pie. <laughs> I'm going to um, <laughs> cast uh, detect evil in the direction of house. Detect <laughs> evil in the direction of house. Do you have a card? A quick card there? Like, what's the exact range on uh, Do you have the macro? I have, pop the, up? Uh, I have the macro. I just uh, need to click on it in order to cast it. I didn't have detect evil. <laughs> I got to it before the button click. Hey. <laughs> oh. It is yeah, 60, 60 foot. feet. 60 yeah. feet. I'm assuming you get close enough to the house to see if this is something in the house because yeah, you're yeah. not a fool and you know how your spells work. Okay, so on the first round, uh, we'll say that you do not detect the presence of evil in the first round. Okay. Right. Seeing uh, what oh, he's wait, no. doing, I'm sorry. Yes, you do detect a trace of evil Ooh. on okay. the first round. Uh, but I want to like, so I'm gonna go back and forth with you and them while they're doing yeah. their investigation and bounce back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of lift off and be like, Yothric, something's not right." <laughs> <laughs> That's a given. And I imagine, uh, I imagine, um, Obi and Yothric are walking with the cleric as he's walking towards. Yeah, the I'm kind. Of, my my goal was to go kind of up to the side of the door, yeah. and like wait in case anything came out, and kind of also keep my ear open should I hear Dudley or um, our new friend screaming or yelling or anything. Yeah, right. I'm on. I'm on the other side of the cleric, opposite on the other side of the door. Okay. Okay. I know, I kind of ready, yeah. but not wielding any weapons. Okay. So, uh. On the first round, you guys will kind of, like, sneak around, and you won't be able to see anybody through the windows in the house yet. But you'll get to the back side of the house, you won't be noticed, nor will you notice anybody. Second round, you guys come around to the far side of the house from the direction that you initially approached, right? Uh, and you hear muffled, angry muttering. You can't make out the words, you don't know what language it's in. But some, but you can hear somebody in the house. Take uh, out my sling for protection. On that round, it's the number of evil auras in the area, power the most potent or evil aura presence. Uh, so there is a, we'll call it like a medium grade evil aura. There is one of them. Uh, 
I don't think I have to tell you what kind of aura it is. No, I think... Also, with Obadon also having the same ability, mm-hmm. um, he's watching... Yeah, um, he's watching him. Emery's face yeah. and looking for signs to see if he suddenly starts to look concerned or worried or... Oh, you're seeing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> third round, you'll come back around. There is a single evil aura and it is coming from the very center of the building. Uh, which appears to be a room that is... I Like, the, 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 the front window where you would normally be able to see into this room, the curtains are closed. But you guys will successfully stealth around the house without being noticed. You will have heard a voice muttering and cursing in anger. Uh, and that's what you get from the Detect Evil. Okay. Right, as soon as we're at the front door, you said that the blood, there's blood on the, on the doorstep. Yep. A pretty big pool of blood on the doorstep. Um, it's still wet. I'm gonna take my finger and just kind of dab it. Barely. It's uh, the blood stain is is probably like a solid like twelve hours. So old. it's kind of more like tacky. Yeah. So yeah. Like, okay. This, so this I can tell it's. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I was try- just making trying to figure yeah. out if it was like just a, if this was a new fresh I'm, pool of blood yeah, or no, this just happened now. But I'll even give you more detail because I don't know. You're a fucking death cleric. Uh, <laughs> this this came from uh, this came from probably a person. It came here in the middle of the pitchest, blackest of night in the creepiest of the hours in the creepy town. Uh, and it came from the woods. Right, yep. I think we... With the with the bloodstains heading in that direction. <laughs> yeah, it came so, from um, the woods, not to the woods. Right. Uh, and from what you saw, the bloodstain came in to the house and then moved into a place that you can't see. Near right, that, that was what I was getting at. So it, it's yeah. actually like something bleeding came to the house, opened the door, and went in, as opposed to something got killed and then dragged back to the woods. Correct. Right. That's exactly okay. What, yep. There's something evil in that. Yes, and I believe it's injured, which means it's probably going to be very hostile. Oh, never know. Perhaps it's something we can offer to help. With that, I'm kind of like gripping the uh, gripping the handle of my longsword a little heavier and lifting the crossbow up in front of me. Are we all back together at this point? We all yeah, yeah you, you looped okay. around the okay. house. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not. I wasn't planning on going in until you guys get there at least. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody needs help. Uh, it sounded like someone was very angry and upset inside. Possibly yeah. injured. This blood. Maybe we could try to calm it down. Well, I don't know how much how angry you'd be in that situation but hey if that's the way you guys want to approach this thing i'm right behind well, you um, or in front of you depending whatever you need me to do i'm here what sort of aura did you detect emery what sort of thing are we dealing with nothing outstandingly demonic or anything but definitely evil center of the house um decent power. I, I don't want to hmm. have to tangle with it if I don't have to. But Perhaps we should ascertain if the person inside the house is actually the proprietor. Ask if, ask for the deed. That's a bad idea. That's not going to get us anywhere. <laughs> Quite. Um. I do like the thoroughness though, Duds. Keep it up, buddy. <laughs> Oh yes, there are no I'm stupid there ideas. Two doors on, on the middle of the people. room. I hope so we can <laughs> flank it. Um, you never know. We should go in there. Is there multiple ways to get to this center room, or from what you saw? Yeah, like you'd guess, but you don't. You can't see the inside of the house. So the window, it, the the curtains are closed at the front. Uh, there's a back door, but it doesn't seem to lead to this room, and the front door. So it looks like you would have to go through the front door. The way that the blood stains went, through the kitchen, and then into the room. Or, from the back door, and whatever comes, what may. You don't know how the hallways are laid out there. Cool. Okay. Hmm. If perhaps the two of us should go in through the front door, and then a couple of us scout around the back. Come at this from two different angles. Was Great idea. The back or... Yeah, there's a door there. I don't know if it's unlocked. 
How about uh, it's not usually an issue. Amory, Otto, and and the little one go in through the back. We approach from the front. Agreed. All right. Okay. I'll wait for your. No, what, what? What should I wait for to bust in? Well, um, you'll probably hear at least some loud speaking, yelling. Hopefully not uh, the sounds of battle, but wealthy. Oh God. Okay. Thanks, Oak. Over, Don. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll head towards the back. All right. So you three go to the back. Um. Yep. Okay. So, uh, do any of you have any thiefly experience of those three? Oh yeah. <laughs> he 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 was very. Very fluent in the clerical learnings of lock picking, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because the the god of death is it teaches you all of that stuff. Um, you never I know do. when you have to pick a lock on a coffin. So, Otto, would you be <laughs> would you be the kind of person who would notice the types of things a thief would notice? I mean, I have four levels in engineering knowledge. <laughs> I do have open lock. Oh, <laughs> I do. The halfling knows. I yeah, might I have. Know. Yeah, I might know. Okay, yeah, I have uh, four points in it myself too. So whichever. Okay, so uh, between Otto and uh, Otto and Dudley, one the back door is locked. Mm -hmm. uh, and roll me, uh, somebody roll me spot one or the other. Uh, go for it, Jane. All right. Ooh! Wow. <laughs> I don't think I've rolled more than a four. There, okay, so as as the group is heading by, you oh, most one. definitely not miss an important clue. Oh, good. Great. Uh, <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. I keep going. Uh, all right. So then, uh, right there, and Obi Wan yeah. are taking the front door. Yep. So, uh, so the front door is is open, like it's been forgotten to be closed. Um. You can. Are you guys are going in and navigating to the center room? To the door that leads to the center room. Yeah, through the kitchen. Okay. Uh, so you guys go into the kitchen and you follow the blood stains towards the center room. The it they, the blood stains go into a hallway, and then there's a door on the far side of the hallway that the blood stains go into, uh, and it is closed. It is not locked. There is I, an angry, like there are angry voices muffledly coming through the door. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my back to the right of the door frame of the door that's closed with the muffled voices are coming from. Yeah, yep. I'm gonna put my back to the left hand side if there is a side, to, if there is that side. And this, this door, how would it open? Would it open? Oh, shit. it would, it would open in. Can I get a? Uh, are you guys trying to be stealthy? I, I would yes. think. Oh so. uh, yeah. All right, both of you roll me move silently. <laughs> okay, <I'll... laughs> Boots. Boots. Booyah! Boots. Oh. Uh, yeah, but it's not going to matter, because I'm no, going to no, ruin it for you. <laughs> Gore, don't fail me now, man. Come on, Gore. Come on, Gore. Dude, full comes... plate, buddy. Um... <laughs> It'll be fine. Oh, man. Uh, not bad. Not not bad. Not terrible. Wow. Minus on a six. six, on a seventeen, you get a total of eleven. That yeah, is I've got minus impressive. six <laughs> on mine because of all the heavy armor, dude. Makes sense. All right. Um, <laughs> so, I, can I also get a listen check? Uh huh. Uh, you could. But... Uh, sixteen <laughs> for me. Okay, I'm, and I. I'm hearing the, the plate mail. <laughs> okay. Um. So. <laughs> That's it looks time. like the door will the door will open in, right? And I assume you want to like coordinate a three, two, one, and then move in. And the whole plan is to like be all badass with the crossbow and the clear and the moving through the room and shit. Pretty much, yeah. The the crossbow is going to be the first thing that I point through the I door. Think, I think we would have given the other team some time to get in position. Yeah, yeah of course. course. Have, like immediately, you're like, you're like creeping. Like you you are moving silently like an insect through the house, right? <laughs> And you just and you're 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 pressing your back to the wall and you're listening, uh. And what did you get on a listen? Seven. You can't hear anything, or it's in a language you don't understand. I got a sixteen, on the listen. You got a sixteen. You are hearing the distinct sounds of cursing, in 
Uh, well, I can tell you what I speak, and you can tell me if that's something yeah, that... Yeah, go ahead. Lay it, um, lay it on me. All right, hold on. I speak common orcish and elvish. You hear the distinct sounds of cursing in elvish. Ooh. Bastard. Um, uh, <laughs> it sounds like somebody is pissed. Not just pissed, but pissed angry at themselves, angry at quote, that fat bastard angry at like, <laughs> somebody is like, furious and it's a mixture of common and elvish and uh, a lot of idioms are being thrown around that the dwarf would never possibly understand because they are human idioms uh, and you are about to turn and communicate this to your your friend here and do that cool like, kicking of the door in the clear in the clear after you've given everybody the chance to like, get into position when suddenly out of nowhere behind you comes, I swear to God, the stealthiest old lady I have ever rolled dice for with a <laughs> frying pan. <laughs> and she starts screaming, thief, thief, and starts clanging the frying pan on the back of your armor to no real effect because it's an old lady and you're wearing actual armor. Okay. Um. At that point, those of you who are sneaking into the other side of this center room, is anybody making the unfortunate mistake of standing in front of the door? No. Uh, no, I would, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, no. proper, proper breach no. technique, right. right, to the side right. of the door. Oh, Open the door. He could be standing there with one foot raised, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys are, like, next to the door. You would have noticed the door swings towards you. So there's okay. a reason for you not. And basically, what will happen is Emery, uh, yeah. you have you have Dudley and uh, Duds and Otto are assuming the position at the correct side of the right, okay. uh, which turns out to not be the correct side of the door through no fault of their own, right? The door should have swung like this, but the door clashes and then breaks the other way, and a wounded and bleeding. Uh, half elf. At the, the you hear the yelling and the shouting of the old lady clang, clanging on uh, Auberdon, right? And then the shot, and whoever's in this house, which you are detecting as having the evil or will break, will hit the door, bounce off the door, curse even more loudly, then slam into the door, and it'll open the wrong way. Okay. And you will be confronted with this half elf, who is uh, clearly the source of all the blood. They are wounded from like here to here to here to here something really tore into them and from the wounds themselves it'll dawn on you it's not the person who's giving you the evil aura it's the black veins growing from the wounds mm. they've been struck with some sort of vile poison or curse or something not nice that is withering them from the inside out okay is he on oh his feet running still or he's he he's going to try and get past you but he's wounded as all hell, and you aren't. Uh, and yeah. also, I imagine Otto and Dudley can probably get the door out of the fucking way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys will be able to contain him, much against his will. And he'll start, like, shouting that you won't get him. No, he got away. No, 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 no. He's not all here, but he clearly thinks he's being hunted. Uh, Oberdon and Herthuk. Well, if I'm being assaulted by an old lady... <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm going to drop the long sword in my primary hand and use that to grab hold of the wrist that is holding the frying pan to restrain it. Say, like, calm down, woman. Calm down. Are you the proprietor? Is this your home? It's my house. You ain't stealing nothing from me. Ma ma madam, madam. Uh, I'm going to bust out my best, di dipl my, my best diplomatic means and say... Calm down, we saw a lot of blood and we were rushing to your assistance. We thought you were in harm's way. Um, incidentally, that, that pie smells delicious. Uh, but besides the pie, um, did you happen to notice the individual that was inside your house? Is it somebody you know? <laughs> You're like, well, we saw the blood and we think we might, we might have helped. And she, and she says, wait, you're a healer? Um, of sorts, yes, of Why sorts. Why didn't you just say so? In, in, in! And she starts, like, pushing you into the room. Okay. Where all the blood is. So, so throughout all that, Arthur just kind of, like, leans forward into the hall to look at the old lady, because probably Obadron's in the way. Right. And he just raises a brow, doesn't act, doesn't react, just kind of, like, 
Right. See, this would have been the perfect Follow example. You, you should have just gone flurry of blows. I was going to ask you for a roll, but then you said, then you suggested you were here to help. And so I was like, now nah, we're not going to need a roll. That's specifically what she's desperate to find right now. Right. And she'll shove you into the room. And, uh, Amory, what are you doing with this dude who's, he tries to get past you. I'm assuming you just like stand in the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be like, um, sir, um, can I, are, are you well? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like pointing oh, at it like, doing? are you well? <laughs> no, no, you won't finish me. And he goes to pull a sword from his hit from from his back, and okay. you'll you'll have seen this like this is the sort of thing that only somebody who needs a surprise strike would mount their short sword the way that he would have, except for he doesn't have his short sword, which tells you that he's doing it by instinct, which means he's used it a lot. <coughs> And he'll stumble and hit the wall and then stumble into you and then try and shove you back, but fall backwards. Yeah, as he, as, as he stumbles into me, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put a cure light wound on him. All right. Roll me the die. Okay. Um, there's the button. Found the button. Now where's my guy? Cause I need to click on the, that's the wrong guy. I think that's the wrong guy. It's covering the screen. Help. Help play this game a lot. Wow, ten. Pretty nice. Nice roll, not bad. That is a really nice roll. All right, so <coughs> okay, use it on the evil guy. So, uh, you patch like you'll 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 pray to your god and channel the power of your deity. Uh, what do your what do the heels of Adonis look like? Um, so it's like. The aesthetic is generally white and black. There's some kind of duality, life, death thing. So like, it's almost like the the white energy from the white magic goes in and it kind of sucks back the dark magic and then it kind of grays out and fades into nothingness. Because that's kind of the way the balance hangs. Yeah, you're you're not necessarily you're not you're not like really healing his body so much as you are killing the wound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So like the wounds <laughs> the wounds will die. Yes. And if, if, ever, if ever there was a, if ever you could envision like uh, something that was bad rotting off of the flesh, leaving clean flesh behind, that's what this would look like. It's like molts like a skin. Yeah, <laughs> it, like the wound will like molt off with the white and the black glow, right? Yeah. Um, you won't, however, stop the veins that are almost like tattoos, except for they're slightly animate, mm. so th so they're like wriggling a little bit. On, just under the surface of his skin and it doesn't seem to collect his mind too much but there's a huge relief that comes with his body being patched up and he'll kind of like lean against the door and then he'll hold a hand up at uh, Otto and Duds and mutter something about how he can't you don't look like no here uh, sir sir I'm gonna go out and hold his hand why don't so you, you try a few deep breathing techniques? <laughs> <laughs> In through the nose, out through the mouth. Nice and simple in a rhythmic motion. He... You, you're you used to people kind of like reacting to you with a mild annoyance, right? What do you you're mean? Not, you're, not, <laughs> you're not used to... Me. <laughs> he's so thick-skinned, he's just never felt it. You're not used to people <laughs> reacting to you with fear and as you start approaching and talking about like the deep breathing in right he flinches as if you were trying to like strike him like you've seen people who have been abused right and he has that like instinctive flinch which he'll stumble back into the room toward Oberon and Hirothurk and the old lady will immediately like like a mother hen just burst into action with the shushing and the and the, and the calm soothing voice and 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 talk him down even though he doesn't seem to be registering what she's saying and he'll eventually just be like curled up in the corner of the room where all of his blood has stained the corner of the room next to the first aid kit the old lady had tried to apply to him so she's probably the only reason he's alive right now so initially then um Oberdon was about to rush forward to him but yeah. seeing the old woman suddenly bolster forward <laughs> I'm gonna kind of step back and give her the room, so and then like kind of just the wrong end of this lady lean already, back like, and pick up the long sword from the floor, and kind of watch her from the side of the the side of the room in the doorway. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so she'll she'll eventually calm him down, and he'll be like looking, like he's looking at you guys, like you are here to eat him. But I then don't he know. looks We've at her but and like, potato. right? <laughs> he Half does look like something that's not a potato. I mean, like <laughs> to be fair, right? But like you get the idea that he's not seeing you for you because he looks at the old lady, and she seems to have convinced him that you aren't, that you're okay, and he's confused by that. But he'll listen to her. Hmm. Isn't there something we can do? Uh, uh, some kind of spell? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go... I'm going to walk carefully over to him. I'm just going like, to stick the longsword into the floorboards um, and lay into down the heart. crossbow. Um, yep. When we were coming through the room, what, did I witness um, Emery actually... Channeling Adalus' healing healings touches on onto him, or do we not see that? I would assume, unless he was specifically trying to hide it, it would have been something. Yeah. So the timing was yeah. that we would have been coming through and would have witnessed it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go over to him very kind of cautiously with both hands raised, so he can kind of see that I'm not clutching any weapons. Easy, take it easy. Now lean in and. Slowly, kind of like a person that's trying to pet a dog that may or may not bite, and you hadn't quite figured that out yet. So the whole, yep, gingerly kind of moving closer. Um, I lay my hand on top of his forehead mm -hmm. and say, "Adalis, give me the power to flow the bravery of our order into this man and bestow." A stolid state of heart so that the fears may be gone from him. And I am going to cast um, Remove Fear. Oh. Um, let me uh, do that. I almost took that one today and I didn't know. So okay. <laughs> um, so basically, um, the mechanics of it, it would give a plus four morale bonus um, for up to ten minutes, but I'm using it more to try to calm him down feeling like he's got some form of courage cu yeah hatred from us so i'm just trying to maybe see if i can't diminish that to some degree um so as i'm reading it you instill courage in the subject uh for plus four if it's relevant yeah uh when the subject is under the influence of a fear effect when receiving the spell that would be suppressed for the duration of the spell <coughs> okay so, uh, at the very least, you've given him a sense of bravery. And he will, like, it'll take him a minute to, like, stand up. And he's, that that horror on his face isn't gone. But he's at least got a hold of himself. And he's no longer freaking out. Instead, he's just glaring at each of you, waiting for you to, like, suddenly grow claws and rip out his throat or something. Um, can I take a closer look at the animated scar mark on his arm see if i know anything about that yeah give me a give me a religion check okay knowledge religion there oh oh that's one of my good ones yeah <laughs> yeah so the old lady will immediately launch into having seen that uh obadon here is in fact here to help uh she will launch into a, a rambling story uh, that bounces around from here, there, mentions details that aren't relevant to anything, like she was looking for the salt. Oh no, the salt. Oh god, the pie. She's forgotten everything. <laughs> Scatterbrained, but through the various, uh, like the regurgitation of, of things, you can kind of filter out what she what what you don't need to hear, and you'll get the gist of it. She was making a pie. He burst into the door and clung to her symbol of uh, Alitamara. So if you're familiar with the Greyhawk setting, I have taken Alitamara and I've kind of tweaked him a little. He's chaotic neutral, not chaotic evil. Uh, legend has it in the creation of the world that Alitamara gave mortals free will by sacrificing his sanity and became the god of chaos. Uh, most people who follow Alitamara will be things like thieves and rogues that feel that luck helps them get by, or gamblers, or uh, occasionally you'll find people who just didn't fit in to begin with 
fall under the opening and welcoming arms of Alitamara, although nobody really trusts Alitamara because he's not evil, but he's not good. He's like the Fae. Hmm. Uh, there's just as many reasons to interact with him as not if you're trying to be optimal about it, but generally it's a safe bet to just not fuck with the chaos. Uh, and so, you like, he came in and he was hugging the, si the symbol of Alitamara and she felt so bad for him uh, he wasn't afraid of her. He 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 said something about the demons, the devils, the necromancer. He came in from the woods. Uh, and then she'll mention a name. His name is Wallace. Wallace. Denaire. Otto. Yes. Sally Denaire was a very pretty girl back in town. Yeah, she, she was, was. She was very worried about her brother who had got got. The guttening. <laughs> you were desperately making certain as to not overly or actively woo her. You can't, after all, lay it on right you have to you have to be humble about this you can't just like assume interest and so you were very introspective and very comforting because what what kind soul would turn away somebody who needed a shoulder to cry on uh and she was just so nice and very pretty and, and innocent and distraught and very pretty mm. yeah <laughs> and pretty and pretty yeah. and distraught and, and pretty and and pretty. <laughs> yeah. And very pretty. So we get Fuck, the sense oh that God. she had a she reasonably good appearance. <laughs> um, really great personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The pretty part, though. <laughs> <laughs> and her last name's Denaire. Denaire. Ooh. Like Wallace Denaire, who is the person whose name was brought up. Yeah, Sally Denaire. Very worried about her brother Wallace. Yes, she's pretty. Yeah. Sally is good. I'm pretty worried. <laughs> yeah. Back she in was town. So pretty. You know and, all about that. And, and sorry, Squid, you, you you skipped on me a little bit. How did his name come up? You kind of tweaked on the me old second. lady. The old lady calls him Wallace. Gotcha, gotcha. Because okay, okay. he's such a nice boy from town. She was very worried about him. There was that one time that he brought the sleigh over with the extra potato seeds when there was the crop that was bad, and he's been he was helping everybody out so much, and he was just so worried that maybe the Gottning would get Sally. And then that time when he brought over the seeds, she remembered that he owed her some money, and now she's very happy that he's here because now she can get her money. So now that she said that, and I, it kind of comes into my mind, do I recognize him as... Can I tell him, like, oh... You can see a familial resemblance. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's... Half-elves aren't the most common thing on the planet. Uh, hey, uh, gang, there might be a small chance that I know who this is. You know this particular what? fellow here? The one that is suffering from this strange malady? Yeah, uh, he... Well, not in his mindset he's in at the moment, but when he is of sound mind, he's from someone back home. He's the brother of a girl who was, well, she was very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably very worried. <laughs> she was, yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna almost timidly like realize you just kind of, kind of see my face go a little bit white, um as something kind of flashes over my face and I steal myself and I, I, I turn and almost timidly look down at him and try to get his attention and be like, Oh, uh, Hey, Hey, wall, Wally, do you, uh, do you remember me? And wait to see if he recognizes me. Wally doesn't recognize <laughs> you at all. As a matter of fact, like when you talk to him, he, steals himself against you like and defiantly glares at you but doesn't understand what you're saying okay so all all, all you guys are gonna see me all very very faintly like almost a little sigh of relief come out <laughs> and i'm gonna turn around and go uh, it seems like something is fogging his mind where i i know he knows who i am but 
I, can one of you do do that thing again where the light flashed and and he seemed to be healed more? That was that was really incredible. Da, 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 da. And by book, I mean I have. A Are question. you actually so, like? Is he one of the ones that got? Yeah, he he disappeared from my town a little while ago, and his sister was really worried. So. Uh, while he wasn't the main thing I was looking for traveling outside that town, it was something I was always just starting to keep an eye out for. And, uh, well, <laughs> the world works in mysterious ways, as I always say, and here we are. It's very serendipitous, almost. I, I look. Well, this isn't the monster. This is the people who... This is what happens when you get God, is this. It seems to be, yeah. I want to take a closer look at Wallace's wounds, and in particular... The residue of this black stuff. Um, I guess a heel check. I want to kind of figure out what type of wounds, whether it was like a natural weapon, like a claw or something like that, or some kind of blade. The wounds have, the wounds have been healed. All of them? Yeah. Uh, yeah is there, all, okay, is there still yeah. signs of like blackness in his skin? Like Yes. That's the black. Like, so, so basically, there's like these veins uh, of, uh, or black like tendrils that are underneath the skin and they appear to be still until you study them now uh emery has been studying them this whole time this conversation has been going on like intently kind of looking at them so i just passed all that information to emery uh so as you walk up and start looking at this you will notice because you're studying his form uh he has a lot of scars this is there's a there's there are scars that are clearly from battle there are also scars that you want to say came from some kind of torture. Hmm. Right, so seeing that Emery's already down there, rather than kind of bust up in his Kool-Aid, I'm just going to crouch down <clears throat> onto one knee. Well, what do you make of this, Emery? It's some kind of curse from Martin, and he's been... He, he was brutalized. It's not. It's not normal. It's. It's. <sighs> Poor guys lost his mind. Do the torture marks look recent or are they old? Well, they look healed now, but the uh, the torture marks look pretty recent. Okay. The scarring, like you've done your fair share of healing, those are the scars that result from a healed wound. Okay. All right. The battle scars look old. Right. Mm. I wonder. Whether this is some strange new disease, or possibly some, as you say, maybe a curse. Uh, yeah. I, I've been wondering that. Um, does the, uh, the, the stuff underneath the skin, <clears throat> does that, it's evil, right? That's, I mean, what, you, that's what you detected, correct? That, that is what I detected, yes, it's right but, here. But, but he is not himself evil. Rex. No, not at all. He's one of the he's one of the nicest guys I know. So, <laughs> so the strange I, malady obviously offers I, I, some form of corruption. I ask this because I have trained to strike particularly hard blows against evil creatures, and I'm curious if in hand to flesh contact it would affect the scars or him the the black veins or him himself. are you suggesting that you no. should pummel this man no you want no. to punch my friend wally <laughs> but if we could if i could burn away the evil you want to burn my hurting... friend wally uh, uh, guys, let's just oh, settle oh, down. Guys, what guys, are you guys, what guys, exactly guys. are you proposing it's something that can be cured, can be cured. it doesn't need to be punched how I'm long did you have? Emery? I'm not saying. God, damn it! Listen to me. I am not saying we punch him. I am saying my skin is blessed, if you will, against evil. And if I were to touch where the black veins are, would it just burn away and hurt the black veins? And not the person. Uh, so it'd more be like a holy snuggle. Um. Uh, well, if you think that there's the chance that it might uh, do some good, I suppose gotcha. it can't hurt too much to try. Um. 
he's already afraid of us as is, so I don't want to yeah, exacerbate I just, that situation. I, I just need one little thing to ask. Uh, um, Wallace. <laughs> don't don't worry. I, it's not... What, what do you see me as? And he'll look to the old lady. And the old lady shrugs. And then she says something to him in Elven. Which was, because I speak that. Uh, she translates, <laughs> what, what do you see it as? She specifies it, though. Okay. The dead, the damned. I killed you. Uh, in Elvish, um, listen, Wallace, we're, we are not what we may appear. You believe us to be dead, as in the undead. Is that right? He looks at you for a second, then he looks at the old lady. The old lady will repeat in Elven what you just said in Okay. Alright. Um, I'm going to pull out the holy symbol of Adalus and clutch it with both my hands. I say, do you know what this is, Wallace? Are you familiar? She translates, and he'll say in common, he's talking to to a lot of you in common, right? Yeah. One of those damn okay. traitor priests. Then in Elvish, I'll say, despite what may have happened, you know what our order stands for. And there is no way the damned or the undead could lay hands on this holiest of symbols without suffering great harm. I understand what it is that you see, but mark my words when I tell you that this is a result of your strange illness. We are not as we appear. Um, she translates, and then he'll look. I've got, a pretty, uh, I'm pretty, I've got a pretty reasonable diplomacy, so I'm kind of really trying to reason with him using yeah, yeah. diplomatic between spell, logic. Between the spell, the, the holy symbol, uh, Emery's explaining to you that he's clearly losing his mind. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm not gonna. Actually, yeah. Give me the roll. Give me the roll. Okay. All right. Because if he Watch can't trust his eyes bad. about you, what means that he should trust his eyes about the symbol? Come on, give us a good one. Uh, Twenty two. Hey, nice. decent check. Nice. That's why he should trust his eyes about the symbol. Nice. Uh, so he'll kind of like he'll <clears throat> nod. He says, "All light, you're out of your mouth." It's the whales of the dead. Okay, with that, I'm going to look to everybody else and say, yes, it would appear that from his eyes, we all look like rotting corpses. We appear to be the oh, lost no. and the damned. Um, oh, God. But never fear, I believe I have done the best yeah. I can to convince that, him that, of the contrary. Perfect. That's perfect. Oh, that sort means of I know like, what it is. I know what sort, it is. Is it like the two sides of the potato thing you were showing me earlier? It's just like the two sides of the potato. Okay, yeah. He's going to... Um, uh, could you tell him to trust me for a moment? Uh, I believe he can speak common. The lady. The, the lady looks you up and down. She says, eh, not my problem. And then she translates into Elvin. <laughs> and he looks at you and he, he nods. Okay, I'm going to very cautiously and carefully approach. And then I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration on the Curse Arm. Does lesser restoration solve it? Going to try. Maybe. Going to uh, at least macro. to a lesser degree. <laughs> wow. There you go. Wow, I rolled a one. That's good. <laughs> I rolled a one. A lot of four. It's not that bad. <laughs> that, all that means is if he's suffering from ability damage, you only restore one point of the ability, but... I don't, I don't uh, have the other one prepared, but... Yeah, so you'll put your hand on it. What does what your restoration spell, uh, your lesser resto, look like? Well, basically, I start muttering under my breath because I don't like the sound of my own voice. Um, and, <laughs> and basically, um, I, I kind of collect some, some white energy from the aether as it appears around me, and I, I, I go ahead and provide that to him, and it should, as I touch the thing should be doing something to that. It really should. So, <laughs> it should. Uh, and at most, you'll, hint, improve hint. His, 
you'll improve his condition somewhat, but you're not going to do any real dent into whatever this black veiny crap is. You will, however, like, uh, and anything else that was wrong with him is no longer wrong with him. And at most, the veins seem to, they try and evade your glowing hand as you reach out. But when you finally grab it, while the veins are clearly not happy with this, like you've suddenly grabbed a wriggling snake, mm. you can't dispel it with a lesser resto. Okay. I'm, so I'm it just tries you. to flee away from, it like just flees yeah. into other parts of the It clearly doesn't like where this is going, but it the spell that you have is not, it's not, it doesn't have enough oomph to, to take out whatever this is. I could try. Uh, Doctor Stans. You said your skin was holy? Vow of poverty, many years of training. My dad wasn't a fan of it too, but I have trained my body to fight against evil. If you allow Emery to lay his hands or his hands upon him, perhaps he'll now Horthric to try the shame. It, it'll hurt though if it if it is what I think will happen. Well, we'll just have to see, won't we? So. Uh, uh, the old lady is, like, rambling a mile a minute, translating this whole conversation through Elvin. Mm-hmm. And at this point, he he turns and looks down at the dwarf, right? And he'll... <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Give me your best shot. <laughs> yeah. As part of the Vow of Poverty, I have some exalted feats, and I have built into the, um... The Holy Key Strike, which gives me an extra 2d6 points of extra holy damage to evil creatures, which is why I was asking about the differential between yeah, no. the thing and him. He himself is not evil. All right. So I am, I'm going to basically put my hands around where the tendrils on his arm are to see if my holy hands can... Holy hands are made of Antio. Any lay on hands, restoration, lesser resto, and I have I have none of that stuff, though. Okay. No. This is for strikes, like when I punch yeah. something evil. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay. I mean, your unarmed strike deals 2d6 points of extra holy damage. When you touch him, and the the energy, the holiness of your skin grabs those veins, you will get a flash of what he sees. Oh. These are not just the dead. These are all dead people he knew. Dead people he Ah. Okay, so everybody that's in my party turns into strangers. I don't know them, but I know that he knows them. Yeah, you share the experience with him because it's trying to infect you. But you are protected by the nature of your of of your of your training and and your monastic tradition, your vow of poverty, right? Like you have that strength of of self that pushes it from being able to infect you. So I'm I'm pretty much going to like Seeing this, realizing what's happening, I'm going to expel my hand by grip from him yep. and kind of leap backwards into furniture if it's there. You Most know? notably, the old lady is just an old lady. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's, that's curious. Okay. Right? So I'm, I'm going to fling myself, <laughs> kind of steady myself and be like, uh, can, can we talk outside? You know, just dust as the party. I think that would be a very good idea at this point. Uh, lady, stay here. Yes, uh, keep an eye on your friend. Make sure that he, uh, doesn't do don't, anything strenuous. Don't, don't lift a frying pan or anything when we come back, please, you know. That's fine, I got other pens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna walk out through the kitchen, past the pie, to the front door where the blood spider is, and wait for everybody. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in there. Yeah. I assume Otto, you're gonna follow. Or you're gonna stay back with Wally. Um. Uh, if he looks no. hesitant, I'm gonna say, "Oh no, you need to come with us. We need yeah, to no. discuss something." Uh, yeah. Oh, no, ab- absolutely. Again, he doesn't. He doesn't know who I am, or else he would know. He would tell you how great uh, I am at everything I do. So let's <laughs> let's let's go with the rest of the other group, uh, and I'll hurry and scurry across to the uh, meet up with everybody else. All right. So, the- making sure we're out of earshot of the people inside. Yeah. I'm going to lower my voice as best I can, although I'm not going to do it for the point of the stream because I don't want to be whispering. Yeah. Let me be like, 
when I uh, touched this his forearm, I saw what he saw, and uh, it wasn't that we were just dead, rotting corpses of ourselves. It was of well, people he knew, not me, but of his family and friends. That's gotta be some real dark magic. And uh, the lady was still the lady. She didn't oh. change at all. That's. Then perhaps bad. it is her that is not as she truly seems. Right. But I would have sensed that. You would have. If it was evil, yes. But what says that she's not necessarily in a different form, but is not evil as such? Needless to say. I suggest uh, we perform an exorcism. No, 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 but um, I suggest maybe we keep our wits about us. But uh, more importantly, Emery, if we had not come across this individual, where do you believe that this would have ended? Would it have corrupted his mind and led him to possibly infect others? Um, not necessarily that as much as the wounds would have killed him, but not before enough of his soul was eradicated by the curse, eventually leading to his demise at an unnatural death he would not pass on. Yes, this is indeed worrying. Adalus would not approve of such a thing. Um... But the madness could have led to some danger. I don't know if the curse necessarily spreads from do you believe with a um, deeper prayer and perhaps time you might be able to do something additional to help this man um, to help him uh, what would be best is if we got him in the hands of well really any church will do it but um, if he could rest under a priest's care uh, anywhere it would slowly remiss and leave the presence of holiness would... Is there a church close by that we know of? Yeah, you would have recognized, like, a church uh, in town. There was one in town? Yeah, like, one, one of the, uh... One of the, one of the like, the Paylorian churches. Perfect. Sun God. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely you perfect. Them, you ask them to do something, and they have to. Yeah. <laughs> and for free. <laughs> and they also happen. To, they also happen to agree very much with most of the things that, uh, like the anti-undead policies that Adonis has. Yeah, they're they're, they're sort of an ally, I guess. I mean, not anymore, but they used to be. <laughs> well, then it seems quite logical that we should get him back to town and hand him over to the Pelorian Church to take care of. What of the uh, threat in the woods? We came all this we way. We go with. after it. No, no, no. Well, uh, I believe. Oh. He came from the woods and encountered it there, so obviously that is indeed something we need to look at. Um, it is but three to four hours back to town, and we have only tarried here maybe an hour at most, so perhaps we can get him back to town quickly. Maybe take a couple of those horses and ride him back to town, return here before the sun comes down, and perhaps we can go venturing into the woods to see what we can find. And the lady, who is not in her right mind herself. Well, well she's um, just witnessed something terrible. Yes, I would agree. Uh, for somebody so old, it is entirely possible that this trauma that she's experienced is the cause for her seeming dementia. Right, but she shouldn't be out here alone. She should probably go with her friend. <laughs> if you can convince that battle axe to leave her home and her kitchen, you go right ahead. I was thinking just a straight punch to the back of her head. Put her on the back of the horse with the man. That would put her into the ground. Why do you lead with violence all the time? Yes, we cannot condone you beating the bejesus out of the old lady. It would be a light tap. I know how to pull my punches. Well, if it was light, it would knock it unconscious, would it? Well, there's a difference between unconscious and dead. Let's and perhaps... And show that line. Let's perhaps ask her if she's willing to leave, or, or wants to leave. Explain the dangers to her, and if she doesn't <laughs> want to depart, then let her be. We'll be back here in a matter of hours. Fine. Fine. Or perhaps maybe somebody can stay with her. 
while the others run back to town and deliver one. I wouldn't mind that. Let let me explain it to her as I understand it, because he was <laughs> paranoid of being hunted, and that means if they're on his trail, or if he's just imagining it, that's one thing, but even then, the possibility of the threat following him to this location would kill her. Yes, we must also remember to make sure that we inform the Pelorians of this fact as well. It's entirely possible that this thing, if it is able to track him based on the curse, may go to the town and seek him there. Right. Which is why we're going to want to try and keep our tracks clean. Yeah. It's a risk I think we should take, is taking him back to town where maybe he can be saved. And... Hopefully we can convince her to come along. Yeah. If not, yeah. I, I, I mean, if not then in. I'll stay with the boy. Me and him can stay here and keep the old lady company. That's Besides. fine, but I just want you to know I do have a badge and compassion in compassion with the elderly. <laughs> well, that's excellent. I do work quite well with them. And I have a very strong <laughs> capability of ensuring that that pie does not go to waste. You wear a very impressive resume. Hey, what does that badge look like, by the way? Here it is. Uh huh. You just look Could at you ex- a picture of a little walking stick? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, just uh, curious. So it could be a walking nice. stick. Could be a candy cane. You, it, your guess is as good as ours. So Emery wants to talk to the old lady. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can convince her. Okay. Uh, so you head back into the house. Uh, she she has started puttering around the kitchen as if nothing has gone wrong all day. Uh, the the half-elf Wally is apparently quiet and calm. Uh, and so, like, she's moving things around the kitchen, changing things from cupboard to cupboard. Like, the moment you think about what she's doing, it doesn't make any sense, but it looks like an old lady just puttering around the kitchen. Um, m- miss. Hmm? What? Oh. Yes. Oh! Yes, you're one of the good ones, aren't you? I, I try to be. Um, <laughs> it would seem some of what he was saying earlier might allude to possibly some danger on its way towards here. Um, for the sake of your safety, I can't leave in good conscience with at least, without at least asking that you come along with us. We intend to <laughs> bring him to the church. Oh, you're taking him to the church? Excellent. That's a very good idea. I like that idea. Uh, you quite all right. Wallace, oh, Wallace is outside with us, right? No, Wallace is in the... Wallace is, Wallace, you left Wallace inside so that you weren't talking right. with him, right? Um, she says, uh, oh, well, I can, I can help you get him ready to go, I guess. And, uh, and don't forget to tell him he owes me two copper. I paid for his tip at the bar. At the bar. You know, with, uh, uh, him. Uh, yes, him. Grok! Grok! <laughs> yes. <sighs> um, can I tell what kind of crazy she is? <laughs> uh, roll me, roll me sense motive. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk to Wallace on, that was the other thing I wanted to do before we card him off. Come on, Emery. Come on, Emery. Uh, no. Ooh, on a seven. Wait, is that right? Is it? Did I roll a two? I did roll a two. You Dang. did, in fact, roll a two. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're not entirely certain that crazy is how would you how you would describe it. She prominently worships Olodumara. Yeah. Um. She could be uh, either just all not home, or she could be deliberately not. She she could be deliberately not putting effort into meeting the social script, as it were. A little Mara is the is the is the mother hen to all of the outcasts. Okay. Right. Uh. So <clears throat> you're not quite certain because she's not giving you any like ticks. Her sentences are perfectly coherent. She seems aware of the situation. And even though she's clearly fighting urge to like go off in fifteen tangents every time she has an opportunity here, uh, she's not 
hiding the fact that literally none of this disturbs her in the slightest. You say danger is coming. And she's like, oh, yes. You're like, we need to, you know, you, if I left you here, you'd be in danger. You have to come with us. And she laughs. And she says, why, why would I miss the good part? <laughs> um, if you don't want to leave, we can offer some of our own to help provide safety when At that your danger service. Come. Oh, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you just the cutest? I don't like being called that, but thank you anyway. Okay. I would so like to talk to like, Wallace. <laughs> she looks at him like, oh god, how do I rectify this terrible <laughs> words I have spewed? <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you're heading into the room to talk to Wallace. Yeah. Um, okay. Are they in the same room with... Is Are they all in the same room? No, Wallace is in the next room. Okay. Um, so, now I've ascertained that at least Wallace understands that we may not be what he thinks we look like. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get down close to him and say to him, um, based on the information that um, the Orthic told us, that she didn't change. Right. The old woman. She did not appear to you the way we did. Is this correct? Uh, stay with me, Wallace. Wallace, stay with me. I can't understand what you're groaning. Um. You don't understand. Wait a moment. I speak to him in Elvish. Does he still have the same problem? Yeah, he doesn't seem to recognize it. It'll dawn on you the whole time you were talking to him before the old lady was translating. Exactly. She was translating, and it was odd because she was translating in the same dialect of Elvin that you were speaking in. Yeah, So but... she was just repeating it. Okay. Hmm. That makes it difficult. He will pause and then turn to the blood stain in the corner and rummage through his torn backpack. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's an adventurer's kit. He'll pull out uh he'll he'll pull out chalk. Okay. And he'll take a he'll just take a portrait right off the wall and just Hand you the chalk and point at the wall. Just okay. Try writing it. Um, I'll write it in. I'll write it in Elvish. Um, was the old woman here when you arrived at the house? And then I'll hold yeah. it up and point it to him. He says, "Yeah, I got away from them and ran, and I found the house. And before I even got here, I could feel." the holy energy and he motions at the symbol of Alitamara. right okay says, like you said the undead don't mesh well with whatever the hell this fancy holy mojo is I understand did she offer to assist you in the ways that we did no I asked I asked for her help but she didn't offer to Staunch your wounds or try to treat your strange malady. No. I asked if she could. She said she couldn't. Hmm. But she had first aid. I see, I see. Interesting. Very interesting. But that's all I wanted to know is if she was here first or if uh, she stumbled across you as you hid inside the house. I've never no, she... seen this lady before. He says, No, I'm not from here. No, quite, quite. I did think it was odd. This is a house for three people. And you've not seen anybody else come or go? No, but I felt it was rude to ask. I understand, yes. And also, several horses found their way from this farm to the nearby town. Uh, anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, we will... We're going to take care of you. Don't worry about that. Um, and I'm going to kind of smile at him with a half haft. Because <clears throat> I don't smile that much. And I'm going to wander back outside. Now that you've like scribbled in chalk all over this poor lady's wall. <laughs> I don't think that this old lady. Li I don't. I personally don't think that this old lady lives in this house. I don't think right. she is a resident of this house. I think <laughs> she's entirely something different. 
Um, something very much more spiritual. And I don't know who lives here, but they're not home. <laughs> That's my <laughs> gut feeling. Um, right. I certainly don't see this one old lady taking care of all those horses and taking some of them to town to, you know. Um, so I'm going to kind of go out and pretty much to, I guess, to um, Horace Ruck and Octavius, pretty much re just regale them with what just happened so that they're explain to them these are, this is what I asked him. Is is um Otto back here with us? Are still assigned? Yes. Yeah, he okay, is. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look straight at you and I'm gonna say violence punch head. <laughs> why? Uh, still? After what he just said, why not? No no no, I don't think he's in need of any violence. Think no the, the old he lady. Met, he met the old lady. No, no, I, I do not believe the old lady is anything sinister. Uh, Thank quite you. the contrary, to be precise. Hmm. Well, I don't trust her. Hmm. I don't know whether I would trust her so much as uh, feel that I don't think she means anybody any harm. She may, in yeah. her own way, be trying to achieve the same sort of thing that we are, just going about it in a very different way. The potato. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's give... I, I feel like that might be the perfect note to end the session on. I, I think it is. Yeah. It's just the note of... Yes. The potato. Hi there. I'm Gorbad, normally the resident dungeon master here on How We Roll, but for this particular campaign, I'm going to be taking a seat on the other side of the table to become a player. If you'd like to keep up with all things How We Roll, you can follow us on Twitter at How We Roll, check us out on Facebook at How We Roll, and you can also follow us on YouTube, and you've guessed it, at How We Roll. We also have a website, www.howweroll.com. Now, if you want to keep up with me personally, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gorbad. And don't forget to check out my blog, www.thedmblog.com, for all things Dungeons & Dragons related, both for players and DMs alike. We will see you next time. Sup, I'm Evil Squeegee, they them, and as you can tell by now, Gorbad has made the mistake of letting me Dungeon Master a campaign on his channel. Uh, if you want to follow me on my channel, where I make the mistake of letting me Dungeon Master games on my channel, you can find that at twitch.tv slash evil squeegee. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at twitter.com slash evil squeegee, you can find inclusivity rants, gaming rants, rants about rants, uh, and rants. It is on. It is on. Greetings and well met, my friends. It is I, the great and powerful Serenius Conch. My good friend the Snuggler has asked me so kindly to step in. If you want to keep up with what he's doing in the world, you can follow him at two places. The first is on Twitter, at Matty Sweet Tweet. And the second, of course, is Instagram, where you can follow him at Matty Quick Pick. Can I see what he did there? A clever boy. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time, and don't forget the lavender. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of How We Roll. My name's Jane, and you can follow me on Twitter at Jane on Twitch with a zero, not an O. I also do stream like three times a week now, so you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Jane Ivana. What do you gotta say, Norman? <laughs> Sorry. Peace, suckers. Hey y'all, Shagget here. I play various characters on How We Roll. Uh, this is the first campaign where Gorbat is a player, and I very much would like to enact my player vengeance on him, um, since he's usually the DM and I can't do that really, because he'll just, you know, wish it away and make it irrelevant. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Ineb underscore Convos, and we can start a dialogue to find out the creative, awesome means that my character will get his character killed. Uh, because isn't that what every player wants to do? I think so. Hi, it's me, Zatch, player, how we roll. You follow me, Zatch, 